What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO Episode 6. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the OK Beast. Blessing. Addy Oye Junior. What's up, Greg? Not much. How are you? Doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You having a fun day? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, hey, good good Monday afternoon here as we good record Monday this Tuesday afternoon. morning podcast. Start off with KFGD. I yeah. think it was a pretty good episode. It was a good one. And then from there, went to play, went and played some games at my desk. Okay. It was a good time. Did you play some good ones? I played some good ones. What, you, are you going to talk about them later? Or yeah, I will, I will talk about them later. Okay. Yeah. I oh, are you? Yeah, All right, tough guy. Oh. Jeez, I didn't know we're going to do that. Before we go any further, round of applause to our director, Barrett, who got his sixth platinum trophy. Hey. Actually going and doing the Grim Fandango, as the kids say. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Did that feel good? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, the major one was you have to play the entire game with tank, tank controls. controls. No, thank you. Uh, no. Which, oh, wow. <clears throat> which, again, like, Mm-mm. the first time playing it, uh, when it re-released on remaster, like, five years ago, I tried it for a couple minutes. It was like, nope, can't do it. This is weird. But then since then, I've had more experiences with, like, playing games that you have to play tank controls with, like the original Resident Evil games and stuff like that at IGN. So oh, getting I back, see, yeah. So getting back into it, it was weird for a couple of minutes, but then like after like yeah. 10, 20 minutes, I was like, okay, I get, I can get used to this. And so yeah, I was just doing that, and then finding very specific like conversations and quotes you sure. need to pop. Uh, so yeah, I just had to do like another playthrough of the game. And now like, they got your taste. Do you want me to hit up Ratalika, get you a whole bunch of easy platinums there? Hmm. Huh? Hmm. I'll tell you, Don't I, did, do it, I, I did that Milo game. God. Did you? Oh, hell yeah, I did that Milo game, bro. Right? Wait, which one was that? The one where you're the dog. Go get the, you gotta find the oh, bones and the keys that's and whatever. The, that's the Zelda-like game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it good? It's not bad. Okay. It's an easy platinum I got on my flight to LA. Did we talk so about cool. this last week? No. Okay. I, I just talk about cheap platinums a lot. Gotcha, yeah. <laughs> because like this is PSI Love You XOXO. Each and every week, Blessing and I come to you on various platforms to talk about all things PlayStation. If you enjoy that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Games. Over there, of course, you can give us your questions, your suggestions for Blessing's PSN name. I revamped the form this morning. whole bunch of different stuff you can do on there now, of course. We have been geared to dreams, but I'll tell you about all that later. Of course, on Patreon.com slash Games, you can watch the show early at as we record it live, you get it without any ads. You can get it on demand without any ads. You get it with the post show. There's a whole bunch of different things you should go over there and support us for, right, Blessing? Exactly. Exactly. If you have no bucks to toss our way, though, it's no big deal. You can wait till each and every Tuesday morning we put it up. YouTube.com slash games, RoosterTeeth.com and podcast services around the globe. I'm ready to talk some PlayStation. You ready to talk some PlayStation? I am ready. Uh, Let's get some housekeeping before we jump into that. Uh, First off, we talked about it last week in a preview. Now we can talk about it afterwards. Dreams. The first impressions uh, we did for Dreams. The Media Molecule came by. Uh, Siobhan, Abby came here. Me and Blessing played some Dreams. Talked to them about the the trophy list for Dreams. Talked to them about uh, their favorite creations, the community, all that jazz. That is live right now. Uh, YouTube.com slash Games. The Gamescast podcast feed as well if you'd like to catch up on that. Another fascinating discussion. Yes. We'll talk more dreams in this episode, of course. Uh, for you, a little bit of promo. Tomorrow, well, I guess Tuesday, when you're seeing this, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Fran and I are putting a Division 2 uh, preview. That's first right. Division 2 preview, first impressions. Okay. Uh, say no more, Blessing. Gotcha. Say no more. Gotcha. I don't say know, nothing, I, Blessing! I know nothing about it. Uh, on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So you can go over there, check that out. It'll be on the Gamescast feed as well as all the first impressions are. Uh, me and Fran talking about whatever that is, because I still can't tell you because you're watching live and this will be up before then anyways. But Division 2, Tuesday, 1130 a.m. Pacific time. Get it there. Uh, I want to thank our Patreon producers, of course. This show wouldn't be possible without them. It's a big deal that we finally are into February. We can list all of them. However, that means there are a lot of them. (gasps) James Davis, David Mintel, the Mind Freak, Mohammed Mohammed, the Nanobiologist, Frank Furter, Thalia Floyd, uh, Jesus Berrio, James Hastings, Quaid, Start the Reactor Burnett, uh, Amon, uh, because like Damon, right? Amon Martin, uh, William A. Nance, Billy Laporta, Michael Bradley, Robin Wyland, uh, Tom Bach, uh, Jordan Luke, uh, maybe Luck. Mm-hmm. Luek? Uh, huh? Luek? Luek, you think? I don't know. Jordan, let us know. You, there's a ways to communicate with us. Tell us. Casey Kern, Luke Pattinson. Yeah, Pattinson. Pattinson? Pattinson. Luke Pattinson. 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 Pattinson? Is that how Robert Pattinson spells it? No. So that's that a different word, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's I'm still dropping it in there. Pattinson. Man, that's got to be one of those people, if you're Luke, you hate. Because like everybody says your name out like Robert Pattinson. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. All right. yeah. uh, Julian... Groot Tata Duria, uh, Max A. Blair, Cody Banks, Trent Berry, Jacob Pilicu the third, Pleak the uh, third, Thomas J. Meehan, Sancho West, Travis Ray, uh, Joseph O. Youssef, uh, Sean I., Evan May, Steven Insler, Elliot Kosh, 
No, Kosh. 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 Uh, Kosh. You know, what's the ball? What's the Kosh? Kosh. Is it Kosh? Like Kosh balls. Are you the heir to the Kosh ball fortune? What is it? Let us know. Huh? What is a Kosh ball? What? Do you know what a Kosh ball is? No. Is it like a foosball? <laughs> Great. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm so old. What's a Kosh ball? It was a little like it wasn't like a Nerf ball, but it was like a rubbery ball like that. I think a lot they had some of they had like tendrils on them that you throw. Uh, now Rosie O'Donnell was very big into them. She oh, okay. had them. She had them on her desk when she had her own talk show, and Whoa. she would throw Kush balls into the audience and stuff. Remember this is when movies? she was called the Queen of Nice. Remember oh, this? No, no. <laughs> not at all. God damn! It. I remember. Wasn't she in Harriet the Spy? I didn't watch that. Uh, David Norwich, uh, Ben Wolf, uh, Adam Bankhurst, uh, Evan Ballard, Keith Lewis. Hey. I'll get better with your names as the months go on. But of course, you did a good me, job. Me laughing at your name like Burt Meg, right? That's all part of the fun of being a, a Patreon supporter. Uh, today, we're brought to you by our sponsor, patreon.com slash kind of funny games. But I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's start with this week's X's and O's. Whoa. Whoa. That's right, everybody. Whoa. The one comment I see that seems negative that gets repeated all the time in the comments is like, it takes too long for them to get to the news. Mm-hmm. So I thought I would try it out putting it. Because, you know, you mess around. It's our show. We can do whatever we want with yeah. it. You know what I mean? And so, like, when we started uh, PS I Love You XOXO Volume 2 here, the idea was, like, well, it's a celebration of PlayStation. It's going to go on forever. We'll be exhausted by the end of the show. We'll get there in the end. But so many people wanted the news. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I guess we should put it towards the front then if it's going to be like that. We'll still do all the segments. What's your plans coming up and all that jazz? Don't worry. But we still thought we'd talk about that. And when I say we, I meant me. So let me know what you think of this because I'm always listening. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you do anymore, all right? I don't like that you look like you've been working out. Look at these guns you got. You oh, know? Yeah. there it is. Look at them. Damn. What Whoa. are you doing? Lifting boxes? Playing video games. <laughs> nah, all right. Good. Okay. You can, can confirm Rosie O'Donnell was in the Harriet the Spy movie. Okay, fine. But can you bring up an image of a koosh ball? Like, this is what you guys didn't know. Give me a K-O-O-S-H. Yeah, there it is. First thing. Koosh ball. There it is. That's I was right. Oh, cool. yeah. Remember these guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to love those things. Yeah, hell yeah. You remember Koosh balls? I didn't know they were called Koosh balls. Yeah, yeah. Some of them had like the, the rubber band on the back you could fire them off with. Oh, yeah. Are Koosh balls not in business anymore? Go back I'm to the other page because it had a little thing. It had a little description. I've not seen button. one in a while, but also we're not kids. Back, ball one more, back button one more time. The Koosh ball is a toy made out of rubber filaments radiating from a steel bond core, patented in 1987 by Scott H. Stillinger. Uh, the company later expanded their product line to include 50 other Koosh related products, including key, including key rings, baseball sets, and yo yos. Um, yeah, they're no, still they're going. still kicking. Wow. Nice. Koosh balls. Koosh, hit me up, man. I'm still around. Ner- uh, Rosie O'Donnell not talking about Koosh anymore. Greg Miller. See, how do not- we get a Koosh ball sponsorship? Exactly. Why don't, why don't, I, you're thinking too big. Really? Just send me a box of 400 Koosh or balls. Or that. Let me fire them off the roof into the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> Number one on the X's and O's. Blessing. How much is the PS5 going to cost you? Oh, man. Right? We'll see. Uh, Tom Ivan at the Video Games Chronicle had this one up this week. Uh, Sony's chief financial officer, Hiroki. Totoki, uh, has suggested the company has yet to determine the PlayStation 5 price as it attempts to balance its position based on several known and unknown factors. Chief among the latter will most likely be Microsoft's Xbox Series X pricing plans. During Sony's third quarter earnings call on Tuesday, senior EVP and CFO uh, Totoki uh, was asked how the company intends to achieve his stated aim of a smooth transition to the next generation con- or next console generation. The questioner asked which factors Sony can control, such as marketing and development costs, and what the invisible elements that are, are, are that are making things tricky. Quote, first, we must absolutely control the labor cost, the personnel cost. It must be controlled, he said. And the initial ramp up, how much can we be prepared initially? Uh, We will work on the production and the sales, and we will have to prepare the right volume as we launch this. What is not very clear or visible is because we are competing in the space. So it's very difficult to discuss anything about the price at this point of time. And depending on the price level, we may have to deter- we may have to determine the promotion that we are going to deploy and how much costs we are prepared to pay. You following so far, Blessing? Yes. Because it's a very clear quote. So it's a question of balance, he said. And because it's a balancing act, it's very difficult to say anything concrete at this point in time. But... When I said smooth transition, we mean that we will definitely choose in the optimal approach uh, and that we will not, we will, we will try to have the best balance so that there will be profitable during what the fuck is he saying? What's it going to be, Bless? 
four hundred dollars. I don't know. It's no. I mean, get out there. Make your prediction. If I, don't I mean, be a coward. If I had to predict yeah. four hundred dollars, but I wouldn't be surprised at five hundred. I mean, I feel like that's like the easiest thing to say, given what we've heard about the power and what the PlayStation Five is going to be. And now you say the power, you mean how it's what the, the Series like, X is supposed to be more powerful. When I say the power, I mean like the PS5 having an SSD and ray tracing and, and all this stuff, right? Yeah. Like that stuff sounds expensive. And from, from what we know about technology and how much this stuff costs, right? Like, you know, for to buy a gaming PC with that stuff in it, that costs money. Granted, they're going to want to compete, right? And if the Xbox Series X comes out and ends up being $500, they're probably going to want to hit that $400. So everything, everything that's being said here makes sense as far as them wanting to compete with xbox what i want to know and i can't remember if it was you i had this conversation with or imran i think it was imran i wasn't on with you on this gotcha because this is one that this is for obviously you know i try to cull, cull the stories but then put a different spin on yeah. the discussion did we have well i feel like i had this conversation with you maybe it was imran but did we have the conversation of like if playstation or maybe it wasn't wrong if playstation comes out at or not playstation if xbox comes out during e3 and announces their price yeah wouldn't that be too late for them playstation to then react because then like that's post e3 i think yeah. it was Emron that had the conversation i mean yeah. i yes i definitely think that uh, you know i you know i'm not even trying to you know give shit to the writer from video games chronicle here mm -hmm. right tom ivan right yeah. which says chief among the latter will likely be microsoft xbox series x pricing plans i don't know how much playstation is actually concerned with that because, again, even if you're one of these people still being a crazy human being, holding on to the idea that sometime this month of February, you're happening. getting a PlayStation event where everyone's being shipped off to London, New York, uh, L.A. or whatever. Greg, it's happening. I'm reading it on the boards. It's well, going to happen. Well, remember, the website went up. I was going to say, <laughs> number two, just to bring it into the same conversation. Oh, I'm on it. Oh, you, you're not even Kevin. Do you know how to do the PlayStation 5 watch graphic? Uh, I can figure it out. It's the 4K one. Use that at some point. We got to oh, get the okay. place because this is supposed to be a PlayStation 5 uh, section. The yeah. PlayStation 5 watch here as we got going. Uh, yeah, the, the PlayStation 5 page is now live. Uh, you can, of course, go on to uh, PlayStation's website now and get the following where you pop up and it goes, PlayStation 5 is coming. Launches holiday 2020. We've begun to share some of the incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of PlayStation. Sign up below to be among the first to receive updates as we announce them, including new on the PlayStation 5 release date, PS5 price, and the upcoming roster of PlayStation 5 launch games. This, of course, broke Tuesday. Yeah. When PS I Love You, yeah. XOXO, episode 5. So everybody's like, oh, when did you record that episode? Because this thing just... I'm like, who the fuck cares about a website? Yeah. This is literally the Persona thing again. Hit the graphic. It's a PlayStation 5 watch. That's a slick graphic. It's a very slick graphic. Yeah. That's why is I there supposed to be audio? No, there isn't. I mean, there could be... Here, you let it, let it loop one more time and I'll do it. PS5. PS5. Watch, 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 watch. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, everybody wanted to be on my butt about this. See, you know, they put up a website. The, the event's going to happen. And, like, yes, the event is going to happen. We've said of the course. event is going to happen. And it's not going to happen imminently. It would have happened by now. This would have happened. They would have told us where to go. They would have told us what to do. Yeah. If, if anything, if you actually read the site, it makes it sound like it's definitely not happening this month because they, they use the words. Uh, let's see share some what you can expect from the ps5 but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of playstation that sounds like it's not an imminent announcement it's mm -hmm. not an imminent reveal it sounds like it, it's going to be if i had my prediction may like they are or somewhere around that sphere now i want to actually go back and ask about ask you about this oh, or don't you don't have game. to go back we ain't going anywhere okay baby. We're, wanna, we're, I, we're like a good old-fashioned tick bedded right here <laughs> on playstation don't worry about it i want to ask you uh what do you feel like Hiroki Totoki is, is getting at here. When what do you, when why do you feel like uh, video games chronicles interpreting it a certain way? Well, I think because I think obviously PlayStation would like to know what Microsoft's doing. Yeah. And I don't and don't get me wrong. In a perfect world, I wish I'm sure PlayStation would love to be able to react and go. I still stand by the fact that if PlayStation is not here's what's going on. If PlayStation is not doing E3, spoiler alert, they're not. They've announced yeah. it. It's not happening. Then you have to go before E3. Yes. Well, and I think. It behooves you to get closer to E3 and give yourself more time. Also, why give anybody the is any runway to change their plans or do anything or respond or message or anything? So that said, I don't think they can wait on Xbox. I think they know they can't wait on Xbox. All they can do is talk to the people they know or whatever. And even then, it's like there's not going to come back a, a solid answer that Shu and Phil are going to go to dinner and talk about prices and you're going to get anything. It's all going to be back channel, you know, this mention yeah. of that mention. I mean, that's why I feel like this is an interesting quote because like – 
like you say, they can't wait on Xbox because even if Xbox came out in April and announced a lot of their details there, right, including price, I don't know how long it takes for them to decide a price. Like that's a big decision. Yeah. Of, like how much are we going to put this thing out for? Like yeah. that takes a minute for them to figure out. Like okay, yeah, wh- how does this affect this? Like are we expecting to lose money on this box how much money do we expect to lose and how much makes it worth it for it to be this price like that's a whole conversation that they have have to have and that com- conversation has to be had with the higher ups and marketing and and, and everybody so I, I i find that interesting what i want to know from you though is how late is too late because is post e3 like is that inconceivable because yes really yeah. you think so yeah for either of them i don't i don't think you can you can gamble away because you're getting too close to the fall then and on top mm. of that we're it's it's so I don't want to say apples and oranges because it's not that different. But let's talk about PlayStation, of course. The PlayStation Four February reveal for uh, well, the PlayStation Four February reveal was the, basically what the PlayStation Five done with the Wired articles. Here are the nuts and bolts, the specs. Here's what this thing is. This is why it's cool. You should develop for it, kind of thing, right? Mm. It's going to be easy. Then they got to come out at E3 and say, "Here's the real shit. Here's what it is," and end on the price, right? I feel that both. PlayStation and Xbox this time around for their big reveals, their big, hey, here's what it is and what's actually happening and let's talk details and systems and, you know, the things you actually care about as a gamer. I think both of them have to are going to get their prices in there and I think it's going to be that PlayStation is going to come out. You've already owned the PlayStation 4. Here's the PlayStation 5. It is the next step. It is this upgrade. It is, you know, all these amazing bells and whistles. Look at all these first parties. Look at all the partnerships we've made. Look at all the indies we're doing. Look at all these uh, apps and services we're putting into it. Here's how PlayStation Now has evolved and why that's really cool. You know, yeah, your VR works with it. It's going to be this much money, mm-hmm. and I think it's. Go- I think it's going to be three ninety nine again. I think you're going to do four hundred dollars, and I think you're going to be there. And I think that that. I guess I could kind of see four fifty. I can't see getting back to five hundred. No, no. I just don't think that's. I don't. I think PlayStation won this generation based on the back of its exclusives, based on the argument from the get-go, from that February event. This is a this is a PC for all intents and purposes. We want you to be able to play games and develop for it as easily as possible. I think they don't want to lose that mar- market share. I don't think they want to get even close to five hundred ninety nine US dollars again. I don't think they you know oh, what yeah, I mean. No. They, but I mean, even getting to four ninety nine, I feel like gets it into that like. Mm-hmm. It's close enough. Now, the other side of that coin is that I think Microsoft is going to be four ninety nine. I, I do think that they're gonna be that thing. And now granted, there's the, you know, Xbox Series X is that model, right? Yeah. They're calling it Xbox Series X is that model. I, w- I still don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that there is a Scarlet or whatever, yeah. you know. And F- that's that's where I'm at. Like I think they're if the idea is Series X is gonna be five hundred, I think absolutely there's going to be a series s or series whatever they call it series yeah. a whatever like a, a a model that may be either all digital yeah. or maybe they cut like certain features something that is i think it'll be all digital yeah all, all digital yeah, like and streaming and all digital yeah something that like cuts certain features in order to get it down to 300 so they can have that like w- you think it'll go 300 299 yes wow yeah because i think they would See, i think wa- that'll be the one that competes the playstation that's 399 I think the messaging for them for Xbox would be, hey, we have the we have the strongest console on the market with the Series X, and we have the cheapest console on the market with the two mm. with the two ninety nine one. They wouldn't message it like that, but that would be the idea. But of here's like, really here's the pro- here's the problem, and where this gets so into the weeds and interesting on how this is unlike any generational warfare we've seen in terms of consoles. Yeah, they have that out of the gate. Even if they just had Series X, right? Hey, mm. no, no, the Xbox One you can buy anywhere right that isn't the the xbox one s right like that one is the cheapest that Mm -hmm. is the uh, the all digital model that is you are getting everything that the xbox series x can do just at a lower price point another thing it's gonna be everything though because i know i know they've talked about cross-generational but i that's gonna be for xbox first party stuff there are i think there is gonna be third party next gen exclusives Mm. that are gonna be pc xbox series I guess Xbox Series and then uh, PlayStation Five that you won't be able to play on Xbox One. I imagine I don't know. Like this, this generation, this next generation is still so weird and interesting as far as like what, like what we expect it to be and what it seems like it's actually going to be. And so I don't want to like say that up front and, may, and may make that like bold statement. But from what from what I'm understanding, we're going to get like third party games that you can't play on Xbox One. Interesting. 
I think I had not even thought about that. Yeah, because that they've been pitching that so much that I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, like the idea of have they been put on the spot by that? Has anybody asked them it? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't. Well, I, I've at least not read it. Yeah. But yeah, from what I, what I'm understanding, right, the cross generational talk that was specifically them saying first parties, right, or exclusives. So for all exclusives, it's going to be Xbox One, Series X, and I guess PC for the most part. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to when you get to third party, they're not going to have any third party. Ex- well. Actually, I don't want to say that. But, you know, when you get to third-party cross-platform games, you know, those don't really count as exclusive either. And so, like, they're they're in an interesting spot with Xbox Series because, like, they can't market, they can't market it one way as far as it having games just for it. But at the same time, it's going to have – there are going to be games just for that gen yeah. of consoles. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm with you where I don't think that – that's the answer, right? You don't go on stage and say, "Here's a box we're selling it for four ninety nine, right? It is, the, mm-hmm. it is, it, it is the Series X. It is the most powerful. It is all this different jazz, right? But you know, if you can't afford it, then your crappy Xbox can run it. I do think they put some kind of messaging behind it that is, there is this, yeah. you know, uh, I, I said Scarlet, but I meant uh, Lockhart, right? Uh, the, mm-hmm. the all the you know the digital uh, here you stream all your shit, game. yeah. And like I feel like having that there works and doesn't work where if it's cheaper than the playstation all right great but i still think playstation playstation wouldn't worry about them being cheaper it's more about them being cheaper than xbox and that's the whole argument about power and where it shakes out and how much it actually matters because again as we've seen time and time again you can be the most powerful box on the playground but Mm -hmm. if you're not the most popular box people aren't making the games for you yeah it's just you know when 360 was running away with it back in the day playstation 3's get was you know hampered and wasn't looking great or whatever like it was this whole thing of you're building it for the ones that are the most successful. So even if Xbox uh, has the most power next time around, they're going to still make sure it's looking great on PlayStation if PlayStation is the runaway success again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how they message it also as far as – yeah, because I, I, I think you're right as far as them still pushing the Xbox One going into the mm. next generation because that is going to be in some form like the like the lowest skew. skew. You know, that will be – they still want that to be relevant because it's part of the ecosystem, at least for the next few years. Sure. That's kind of that's what they, that, that was their messaging when they were talking about the cross generational stuff. And so, like, obviously, they can't do the thing they did they did last time around where they were like, "Oh yeah, if you don't have internet, we have a console for you. It's called the 360." They're not going to do that again. Yeah. And so I wonder, like, if I wonder what the graphic looks like. You know, if it is a graphic with an Xbox One and a Series at, at X and a Series. S. I get, I, yeah, I, well, I, I would say you probably do away with all that, and it's just the Xbox ecosystem, right? And that's where it gets so weird about what this generation is about to be is that I do feel like PlayStation is sticking to what is tried and true, what works, obviously. Mm-hmm. PlayStation 5, right? This is going to be a thing. And Xbox Series X isn't that way. And when we get to this point, what is the excitement level for each of these things going to be? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where if it is like Halo Infinite is the reason to buy a Series X but you've been burned by it before. Are you just fine to play your Series X on your regular Xbox until Xbox Series X proves there's something to do? Mm-hmm. And then on top of all that, like PlayStation 5 will be the traditional I uh, PlayStation 5. Like This is going to be a different thing. This is going to be a generational shift. This is going to be X, Y, and Z, all the things you already know to expect. But that's great for now. And the hype now, mm-hmm. what does that look like in five years? You know what I mean? Does Xbox's one platform strategy matter more in the end? Does it net out with better results? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm. I also. The more and more I've been thinking about this next console generation, the the more and more I feel like the concept of getting rid of console generations, like as far as like you know, it being just a big ecosystem. The more and more I don't know how much of a thing that's going to be. Because mm-hmm. like at a certain point, once you get rid of console generations, like what does that even like what does that even mean? Because there's still going for on the PlayStation side, right? Like there's still going to be a PS six, or there's still going to be an, a next box that gets so powerful that games will stop being made for the previous box. And at a certain point, is that not just a new generation at that point? Like, in what way... I I feel like blurring the lines aren't really doing anything at the end of the day, aside from from allowing allowing console generations to bleed into each other more, which is fantastic, you know, for the consumer, being able to play games for longer on your your box. But what does it mean that we're... the, The idea that we're sort of going into like a uh, a time where we're getting rid of console generations and this is it dude yeah this is why i'm so fucking ready for this to see who's whose strategy wins out because the idea is xbox makes one platform and says we don't care where you play our games just that you play our games right or use our services to play our games 
is awesome and fascinating, but it's you're nailing it in the way that it's not even, you know, Apple versus Android, right? Because when Apple has the iPhone and is able to put one out every year and then start locking apps out of it, yeah, that's one, a completely different thing because that's a locked ecosystem where you're just part of it. And yeah, like, sure, apps and games show up on both the Android store and the App Store, right? But with iPhone, you're such a closed off ecosystem that you're probably not leaving, that you're probably there, that you're all part of this. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if Xbox does the whole blur into one giant thing, but PlayStation is still setting the cadence of what is next gen and that we're going to put out numbered boxes. If that, if the strategy of sticking to numbered boxes and every seven years we get a new one nets out, then Xbox's strategy of, all right, cool, you can play it on everything. Do, where did where do they fall? Where do they lie? Yeah, and even if PlayStation put out the the say after the PS5, right? They put out something else that's just called the PlayStation. Yeah, you know, and they're and they're like, this is what we have from now on. At a certain point, they're going to make something more powerful that then makes the the previous version of course obsolete. Of course, and so is that called like the PlayStation Two? Or I, I'm <laughs> I'm curious on on where things go with that. Um, and same for Xbox. That'd be awesome. That would be cool, actually. Do you have another PS2? But then again, we're just, I mean, we're also back to the argument of PC gaming, though, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, PC gaming, like, there's never, you know, the next yeah, PC. You're here for your, your PC, too. It is that sometimes things just don't run anymore, or you can't run that game. Now, yeah. I agree with you. Like, you honestly, you've already put in, I think, not checkmate, but, like, a huge question and, and wrench into this works of, that's great for Microsoft, and that's great for PlayStation. They're, you know, first-party stuff, mm. where you're deciding what's about to happen. What about Ubisoft? Ubisoft wants to sell as many things as possible, so they want to let their developers do whatever they can. And as much as we sit around here and say, well, okay, cool, it's a sliding scale where, again, you know, PC can run a game at a million frames per second or whatever at highest settings, or it can run in potato mode and it looks completely different. There's still going to be a cutoff, right, where Ubisoft's like, all right, cool, we're not supporting this low threshold of games that is PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, whatever, you know what I mean? Where mm -hmm. does that actually net out? Yeah, the, the, PC, th the PC thing is interesting. Especially because that's for that ecosystem, you can you can build PCs, you can edit, you can mm -hmm. you know control how how well your PC runs, you know by I don't know much about building, building PCs, do but I imagine you you, yeah. you throw in a cooler processor in there, totally. all of a sudden like you can run PUBG five times. Better. Oh my god! And just the grass looks so yeah. crisp. But even phone, like we compare it a lot to phones, and even phones, like you mentioned before, right? There's at a certain point, your your current iPhone is gonna be able to run games that three iPhone versions ago, like that phone is not gonna be able to run, yeah. right? Like they have quote unquote generations in iPhones and in Androids, um, and so I wonder, I just wonder what the future is. Like this is just me. This is just a lot of speculation, of obviously. Course. But I, speaking of speculation, we do have a question here for PS Five. Watch it, the graphic, Barrett. He was sipping his Coke <laughs> Zero, but I got him. I got him. Barrett, during PS5 watch, I can call for the PS5 graphic anytime I want, all right? Uh, well, I, fucking... Now you know. Now you know. All right? PS5 watch. Uh, JD wrote in to patreon.com slash games just like you can to be part of PS I Love You XOXO and says, if PlayStation 5 is the last PlayStation, where do you guys like the company to Where would you guys like the company to go? Where would you see them actually going? Would you guys pour one out for the end of an era, or would you pour one out for a hopeful future? Do you think... Let's start at the top. That's an ominous question. I know. <laughs> Do you think there's any chance, and I know this is a great one to, in 10 years, throw in your face, uh -huh. any chance the PlayStation 5 is the last PlayStation? No, I'm going to say no. No, no way. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that with an asterisk of, like, anything can happen. Of course. But I'm going to say no, it's not going to be the last yeah. PlayStation. Yeah. Um, where, would, where would we want the company to go if it was the last PlayStation? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, like, there's been talks of like when Nintendo was in trouble with the right. Wii U, of, like them making third party games. I don't even know if I would so want Sony to do that. Like, I oh hell yeah, I would. Uh, what you want them just to fold and go away? No, I. You want them to move it to where is is? I. Uh, in this dystopian future. Yeah. You know what I mean. I'm trying to think of what happens to the first party studios in that in that case, and I would like out. This wouldn't happen because this isn't how business works. But for all of them to be able to like go and do their own thing and become their own studios sure. and, and decide their own future, oh, like yeah, they all become their own happen. independent studios, I feel like that could be a cool thing. But that, that could not, be really cool. But that's not what happened. Yeah, that's not. What, I don't. Work. So like, let's. Uh, I definitely don't think the PlayStation Five, and knowing nothing about this device at all, is going to be a failure. Right? When we were at IGN and we were in the PlayStation Three and uh, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, we were very much like, oh man. 
console gaming, maybe we get one more generation out of this, right? And mm. then, you know, what? The mo- one of the most successful, if not the most successful uh, generation of consoles ever. You know, PlayStation 4 setting all these records, doing all these different things, you know, crushing the leaderboards here for things, or for uh, cons- home consoles. Um, so I think you're put into the same situation where I think PlayStation 5 is going to happen. I think it's going to be successful enough, en- enough yeah. to get a PlayStation 6 for sure. The things that would get in the way would be the complete financial ruin of Sony, uh, yeah. PlayStation Five completely, completely under delivering, fucking it up, and not moving any units. But even then, like, how much of a failure? Like, it would have to be a big failure Hell for yeah. it, for a PS6. I mean, if, any, if, you, if you know, you can come back from the Wii U. Anything you can come back. From yeah, anything. that's what I'm you saying. I mean? Like, you know, if you can come back from the Virtual Boy, like. But the thing would be though, keep in mind that where we are right now, technologically, you know what I mean. Where if you fuck up the PlayStation Five the way the Wii U got fucked up, right, or even. To an extent, not really, but to an extent, the launch of the Xbox One. Mm. If you got that far behind, and who is to say where streaming will be in five years yeah. and what will be the actual dominant See, form? I think of that's a, that's a more int- interesting question of like, what does PlayStation do if the PS5 just fails, like astronomically fails? Like they do, like they somehow mess it up worse than Xbox during like the 2013 yeah. E3 press conferences. Like they do something that's like astronomically stupid and they just they put out a con- controller that is the boomerang they put out the boomerang controller yeah, everybody's yeah. like no and they sell wii u numbers like what happens then because i yeah i think at that point you do pivot but like and and i don't think i don't think it's a thing where they don't put out the ps6 but i think the ps6 just looks drastically different how different i have no idea like or in different what ways i have no idea like do, do they then go hard on vr do they then try out like an uh like a mobile thing. Or this a is where it gets thing. interesting again. Is that even though they've strayed so far from the PlayStation that launched PlayStation Four, which I do, you know, credit as Mark Cerny out there being a huge dork that I love, talking about all these flops and little pixels you can do, and here's Knack, and then like Adam Boys and Shoe sharing the game, and them being personalities, right? That's not who PlayStation is as they launch PlayStation Five. They are we're on top, we're AAA. This is a giant, you know, this is a device. Well, but the core message is still there that I think they've learned their lesson on is that this is a device for gamers, right? It, it, even VR, which is, you know, a peripheral, right? Mm. It isn't a peripheral in the way that the Move was when it launched, right? It isn't a peripheral in the way that the Vita was with its back screen touch and front screen touch when it launched. Mm. It, it, VR isn't a gimmick in the way those things were gimmicks, or at least those, you know, the features, or- features were of gi- gimmicks, right? And so I don't, the, you're talking about how could PlayStation 5 fuck up the launch that bad, right? Yeah. I don't think they can as long as they don't lose sight of we're a machine that plays games. We are here to play games. Both PlayStation with PlayStation 4 and Xbox under Phil Spencer have found success and fan bases based on the fact that, hey, we're here to play games. Yeah. And so if whatever ha- – I, I can't see – there's really two different things I can see making so PlayStation would get out of it by PlayStation 6. And it would be, number one, Sony as a corporation – yeah, totally dissolves. tanks, and they yeah they need to spin PlayStation off or whatever, and that drastically changes the business. Or it is that streaming takes off, and Xbox was way ahead of the game with what they're trying to do with XCloud and everything else. And even with Gaikai, that's not really not the deal. Or with Guy, or you know PlayStation now, but Gaikai, yeah. they're able to bring that in, and it's like okay, cool, we're getting out of the boxes, but you're still in the same way you use Netflix on your TV. Yeah, you're using PlayStation on your TV. Yeah, and I guess that is, you know, bringing this back into, like, the getting rid of, rid of console generations. Like, if that then became the thing, I could then see that being a case for, hey, like, you, we are, you are buying just one box, and you're going to be able to play games forever because everything is happening on a server. Well, that'd be the thing is, like, there's no box anymore, right? Yeah. And that, and that is such a powerful future, and I know that, again, in 10 years, we're going to look back and laugh at this. Mm-hmm. I'll have one eye. You'll, you'll have just cybernetics everywhere. You exactly. Know what I mean? I was, oh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Metal arm. Barrett, I, I hate to break it to you. You passed away. Oh, no. We mourn you future proof. I mean, rest in peace. I'm, Does going, I'm, go, I'm going soon. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you look back and it will be that thing of like, you know, it actually, that'd be fascinating. I should look at a Beyond from 10 years ago and see what the fuck we were saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it is this question of like, I don't. Is the infrastructure in America and or the world yeah. for internet going to be so good that it is that we are just all running our games and streaming and like and I don't see it. You don't see it, but I mean, what like um, 
Nvidia's uh, GeForce, right? And that thing's out now, and people are like, "This is fucking real. This is mm-hmm. I'm playing my Steam library, you know, yeah. on on uh, uh, you know the browser and doing all this stuff." And like yeah. again, Stadia for all its faults, usually people say the tech's pretty good. It's just they don't. Have the yeah, games, and that's the right? thing is that I like I I have I believe that the tech works in that you know you can stream and it can feel fantastic. I just don't think the infrastructure is there for it to become a ubiquitous thing where everybody then has access to games this way just yeah. because of you know how bad internet can be in certain sure and data country. caps and everything else yeah, right? granted, yeah. like a, you, the u.s is pretty bad compared to like a lot of the rest of the world when it comes to internet but even still like i'm i'm, I'm thinking of like a lot of places in the world that can that, ha, that has a ways to go as far as like have allowing everybody to have access to very great internet and so i i mean can it happen sometime in the future yeah i don't know how far off yeah. like I, I i think 10 years is even too soon that's me it's just the fact that you know i forget the theory or the not the theory the uh the actual rule that's not right either but the way that like light or the, the speed of light how or? quickly technology doubles and doubles oh, and doubles, gotcha, and gotcha. doubles to the point of like even where we are with streaming right now I can guarantee you five years ago, I didn't think we would be here, right? Where, like, Google would have entered the market, Xbox would be all over this, that these things would work, and you'd be getting your information, and, like, it would be pretty much there. Because I remember when On Live dropped, yeah. and Scott Lowe walked around the office, and it was Batman Arkham Asylum, on, or maybe it was Arkham City, on a tablet. And it was, like, I picked Whoa. it up, and I was like, oof, dude, no. I remember it being, being blown away randomly, and this is, like, 2013-ish. This is before Gaikai was bought by PlayStation. Yeah. And I swear to God... There was like a Gaikai app or like beta or thing that was on like Facebook and kind of funny.com slash you're wrong me because I've said I've said this to people multiple times and nobody you can back live me up if on you're this. watching live. I'm yeah, if you're watching live, let me I know, know. nanobiologists out there because I swear to God, I've mentioned this a million times. Nobody's ever able to back me up on this. And so I don't know if I, I'll, if I was having like a weird dream or whatever, but I remember vividly playing Saints Row 3 on Facebook in like 2013, like really? a demo. Yeah. I and it think was like a you Gaikai. were just like on a trip, man. And it was like a guy. Ga- it was like a Gaikai thing before they got bought by PlayStation. I swear this is a thing. Nah, you're just crazy. Maybe I was tripping. Maybe I had a dream a few years ago and I thought it actually happened. But I remember I'm, I remember for a while being like, this is like, this is an inc- incredible thing. And yeah, it's cool that, you know, it's gotten, it's grown and we're seeing more companies tackle it. And I, I really, I really want to try the NVIDIA GeForce thing because it seems like they're nailing it. Um, but even then, like, I don't know, man, I, I'm, I'm just curious to see like what, where, where we're at in 10 years to, to see if this can be. And then to your thing. point of like, so let's stick with it of, let's not even say streaming takes over, right? PlayStation mm-hmm. does get spun off. Sony collapses, right? We're, PlayStation as a brand is getting out of, uh, actually producing consoles. Then yeah, I think it's they keep the first parties together and it's still that they're just Sony is now one of the biggest publishers slash developers of third party games. And it is that whatever Naughty Dog is working on will be on PC and it will be on Xbox and it will be on Stadia or whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever other existing, you know, top level triple A stuff is like that. And maybe eventually they're making a ratchet and clank for fucking switch or whatever. But you know, in terms of the big budget, big titles, I think you keep that together. You wouldn't let those guys spin out. You know what I mean? They're 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 locked and loaded now. Yeah. Neil Druckmann ain't ever getting away. Never. We'll he, see. He can run, but he'll come back just like Corey Barlog did. Remember? He thought the grass was greener. What happened? Came back, made game of the year. Fair point. Exactly. <laughs> I can't argue with that. You can't escape. I'm, I'm on the Gaikai Wikipedia page, proving that I'm not insane. <laughs> And so uh, it says here, in, in April 2012, Gaikai launched its service embedded inside Facebook, allowing games to be streamed directly in the Facebook canvas. So there you go. Uh, Mizuki. Wrote into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Thank you so much. And says that, yeah, you're not crazy. Here it is. Uh, pocketgamer.com. Uh, Will Wilson writes, Saints Row 3 and The Witcher 2 playable through game streaming Gaikai Facebook app. Yeah. This is April 11th, 2012. And I remember, I remember doing that, like playing Saints Row on Facebook and being like, this is crazy. Why is nobody talking about this? And then like it disappeared because Sony bought them. <laughs> remember, <laughs> back then we thought PC gaming was dead, so we didn't think we had to it's worry fair. about it. It's yeah. a fair point. We were right for a while. Those were the days. Remember that Barrett when it was on the it was on the ropes? Nobody thought it had a chance. Yep. Fucking Steam. God. Fuck Steam. Everything. It came out and ruined everything. I can't say that. I'm playing Assassin's Creed on it right now. <laughs> you playing on Steam? Yeah. There's like no like current hardware to play it on. You're right. Sorry, it's you're, like the one Assassin's Creed game that hasn't. You're talking been original Assassin's Creed. Yeah, yeah, keep forgetting yeah. you're ta- when you say that. I'm thinking yeah. Odyssey. No, 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 no. Yeah, you really can't play that anywhere, can you? No, it's like it's super weird. Every other game has been remastered except this one. Kind of boring. 
It's kind of it is really boring. Yeah. Holy shit! A lot of walking, it is getting so into groups repetitive. And shit. It's yeah. So repetitive. Yeah. Uh, number three. On X's and O's for PlayStation news you need to know about for the week, PlayStation closed the Manchester VR studio. This is Christopher Dring at GamesIndustry.biz. PlayStation will close its Manchester Game Studio. The firm confirmed to GamesIndustry.biz that it intends to close it as part of our efforts to improve efficiency and operational effectiveness. We understand the entire studio has been made redundant. Sony's Manchester team was formed to create VR games back in 2015. The firm had been working on an unannounced VR project. It is the third UK studio PlayStation has closed over the course of this generation, with Guerrilla Cam Cambridge closing in 2017 and Evolution in 2016. Both studios had worked on PSVR projects before being closed. The platform holder still operates two first-party development studios in the UK, namely Dreams Developer Media Molecule and Blood and Truth Creators London Studio. Rest Blessing Adeoye Jr. Yes. Is this an indictment? of PlayStation VR and a vote of no confidence in the future. Uh I mean, I don't know if I can answer those questions. Like I think you fucking better. You're on a PlayStation. I, I mean, I think this is definitely suspicious when it comes to how Sony feels about PSVR, but I don't think this is like I don't know enough about how this studio operated to like say whether or not that this is like an, uh, an alarm sounding. Yeah. Um I think it's more interesting that this is the third UK studio that's mm, been closed. Mm. Like does that mean anything as far as like how Sony feels about their uk output yeah i mean that's an interesting one about it right so to bring it up manchester here as they talked about you know creating playstation vr games since or a playstation vr game since 2015 yeah and then yeah gorilla cambridge closing 2017 right of course gorilla cambridge known for kills on mercenary on vita and mm -hmm. then doing rigs for playstation vr evolution of course uh motorstorm drive club uh drive club vr yeah that's where that, that movement comes from for me what's going on barrett uh, video wall has been fucking up. Man, so just leave to, it on this still image. Don't I be mind. I, I tried to fix it, and now it's being dumb, so it'll come back. Just leave. No, just leave this. Just leave the kind of funny neon logo. Everybody's cool. They understand. Video wall's being a bitch today. No big deal. Don't sweat it. No, yeah. well, don't put a VLC. I'll, Greg, it'll it'll be cool. Is it gonna be the PlayStation Five watch? <laughs> it's, I'm not. I, <laughs> give me a second if you want me to pull it up again. Uh, no. Can you actually, real quick though, can you make me a graphic for PlayStation VR Studio Watch? Uh, no, I cannot. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um. It is, I, when this came up earlier, a lot of people wanted to, I think, you know, understandably so, cast it, and even as this is framed, right, that they're working, these other VR projects are, or from these studios that yeah. get closed as well. I still don't buy it. I don't buy that these studios are being closed because of their pl PlayStation VR output or something of that effect, right? Or that because of how their games were in PlayStation VR. I do buy, we've talked about this before, uh, Manchester being closed because they've been working on a game since 2015 and they mm -hmm. haven't found the fun yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you talk, we talk about that all the time of games and when you talk to developers and when we've talked to Sony developers, right? Trying to find the fun in this. And whoever the team was at Sony Manchester coming in in 2015 and then five years later still not having a game out under your belt, right? I was talking about this on Games Daily when it came up is that I can see where PlayStation's head would be on that of how do we justify this studio still being owned and operated and functional when they haven't done anything, let alone the fact that you would imagine in those five years how much turnover has there been. And if you're not happy with the leads on it and they've never produced anything and the team underneath them has been in and out every few years at this point, what company culture are you keeping? What what is the end, the goal, uh, the, uh, goal post you're driving at anymore? Mm -hmm. And I think when you lose that, you lose sight of okay, what's the point of having this? If we opened you for a vision and we needed you to do something and you didn't do it and now all the visionaries have changed or there's no longer a vote of confidence in them, why do this? Why just have it limp along? Mm -hmm. And so I think when you look at the listings here, that goes the same way, where Drive Club with Evolution, right, was a huge black eye for PlayStation. Yeah. Like, that was such a failure. That was such a, a public embarrassment of, like, oh, we had the PlayStation Plus free version come out, which then didn't come out forever. When it yeah. finally did, it was still not good. The game was broke. It was all these different things of, like, that is, you know, when you look at a PlayStation studio, I think that burned a lot of money and a lot of goodwill. That's where you put it, right? And yeah. especially uh, as much as Motorstorm is a, a beloved, fun franchise for PlayStation fans, Motorstorm was another one I feel that falls into the kill zone category of just, like, is it really a thing, or is PlayStation trying to make it a thing over and over again? And not to say there isn't fans and there isn't stuff. I thought Motorstorm Apocalypse was awesome. But, like, 
all right, do we need this? Is this are they generating income on it? And then for Cambridge, same thing of Gorilla Cambridge, where yeah, you know that was a different studio before it became Gorilla Cambridge with Killzone mm-hmm. uh, for Vita. And then yeah, for Riggs, it was like all right, cool. What do we do with you now? Especially as again, Killzone is moving away from that. And here's another game that even Killzone on Vita. It isn't really, you know, your thing, but you're you're making it your thing. And here's a VR game. That's all right, cool. Yeah. As these things turn over, what with, do you do with it? With Riggs, though, like at, that that is like a VR game early on in the PSVR's life cycle. Yeah. So at launch what point lineup, do you right? like? What point do you allow that? Or launch that window. Launch. I'll check. Yeah, yeah I think launch window. But at what point do you allow that leeway? You know, to allow them to fail because this is experimental. You know, I like. I, I understand the idea of yeah you've had multiple misses in a row like you know you know thanks for your, thanks for your work but this doesn't seem to be working out but when it comes to doing that with VR studios I feel like that I don't think it turns into an entirely different conversation but I feel like there's something to be Watch taken it. into account there as far as you are doing something that is outside the realm of of normal right like we want VR hits but VR is still a new thing that is still in the process of proving itself what I was talking about. Uh, earlier this week with it is this i feel like what they're they were doing here having studios and specifically for manchester i can't speak because obviously evolution and uh, gorilla cambridge did other things but specifically for manchester basically we're here you're here to make this vr game right the fact that they didn't come together i feel is that them waking up to a lesson i think you've looked at and seen disney learn You've looked at and seen other publishers learn where for the longest time it was, okay, we're Sega. We have the licensing for Iron Man. We're going to give it to one of our studios, right, Mm. and have them make this game. Hey, we're Disney. We're going to start. We got Pirates of the Caribbean. We want to make a Pirates of the Caribbean game. We are going to spin up from the ground up an internal studio to make this game. Think of the sunk cost on that, the overhead on getting the right people in the leadership Mm. team building a team and how long it takes to get from that to actually making the game right and then and i know i I always feel like i'm such a rah-rah cheerleader for him look at marvel games look at when bill roseman came in and started marvel games and was like cool we are not going to try to make the games we are going to take our ip that are beloved and go to beloved developers and have them make the games now granted I'm not going to say it's a knockout home run every time, you know, I mean, to take Guardians and give them to Telltale, to take Spider-Man and give it to Insomniac, right? Yeah. To take Ultimate Alliance and give it... Uh, to ooh, Nintendo. Thank, yeah, well, yeah, but... I, uh, oh, Team Ninja. Uh, yeah, Team Ninja. Team Ninja. Yeah. I, that's, I, I, yeah, I, I, like Ninja yeah. no. Too many goddamn ninjas going on in my head right now. Um, that's a way where you go in and you give it to a team that's already rolling and going and you have a set investment that, yeah, can slide based on deadlines or whatever. Hint, hint, uh, Marvel's Avengers that keeps fucking moving. Yeah. But you are going to get the product in the end and it's going to be cheaper than trying to start a studio that you might not be all the way committed to Mm. and you don't know what the future is. And so that's my take with PlayStation VR is I don't think that this is PlayStation moving away from making PlayStation VR games or PlayStation saying we don't believe in PlayStation VR games. I think it's them sitting there going, you know what, we can pay talented studios to make PlayStation VR experiences and then we don't have to take on the risk and concern of trying yeah, to run a trying studio to do that on top of this right because back to the conversation we just had with playstation 5 and what defines playstation playstation is defined by we are making awesome games for the gamers and i think right now playstation knows how to do that so incredibly well with single player story driven third person action games right and mm-hmm. there's plenty of other ex- you know examples in there polyphony how you doing i'm not trying to insult anybody but i'm saying that they have a very clear course for what works for them. Mm-hmm. And so I think having studio in there, that is, and, I, and I'm, I feel like I'm talking a lot of shit about Manchester knowing nothing about what they're working on, but having a studio that was grasping in the dark trying to find the fun, that doesn't work when there are studios out there that are, are finding the fun, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have no idea how the game will pan out, but like I, I, talked about, I talked to Death all the time of that first Iron Man VR demo from Camouflage. We're getting in there, and it was like, how do you fly like this? How do you shoot like this? And I was like, I'm having a great time. Like, this mm. feels like Iron Man, right? Like, Sony didn't need to build, or Sony and Marvel, for that matter, didn't need to build a studio to have the thing, to get to four years from now where they're finally to a place where, like, we think we can do this Iron Man thing. We're going to do Iron Man. Yeah. They were able just to go, say, you can do this, and let's do it. 
Makes sense. Yeah. And I think if they keep funding cool projects like that, you know what I mean? Like if they keep going to games, or not even games, but developers like uh, 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 Hello Games and like, hey, No Man's Sky, like what about it? You know, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's how this worked, obviously, but I'm mm-hmm. saying things like that. Of like, hey, you have a cool game that's popular on our platform. Would you like to do VR mode? You know what I mean? Look, yeah. look at I mean, everybody's golf even had one, right? When that's yeah. at his first party. But I mean, that's another way of taking an established franchise and thing people care yeah, about and like putting Until it in Dawn. Um, yeah. I forget Russia Blood. Yeah. Russia Blood. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. I think that I think that all makes sense. Uh, I mean, I think it's unfortunate that the studio closed down. 100%. But yeah, I understand, like, from that reasoning of uh, how difficult it is to kind of start that from the ground up in order to, like, in order to appeal to this new technology. I can understand. And that's the thing is, I think it's an old school model of games. And I think it's interesting to see those growing pains here with three UK studios, like you said. Yeah. Um, To see that when you have some an old school mentality of that, of owning and operating and bringing it from the ground up, I don't know if that reflects anymore on what gaming is right now, especially with the financial realities and fiscal things and, you know, what your stockholders want and all that crap, Mm. especially for something unproven like VR, where I think if it's a line item of you spent X million dollars to get this game, Okay, cool. When is it? It's like you have a studio and these people and health insurance and this and like yeah, just the collateral and the, the all the stuff adding up to make this a real thing. Different ball of wax, blessing. It's different. It is different, blessing. <laughs> uh, speaking of different, Greg, why? Number four on X's of O's to close out the week, of course, is January's top PSN and downloads. Let me tell you, bless. Hooey! Not that surprising. No? Same old, same old for the most part. I'll read you the PlayStation 4 top 10. How about that? Do it. Number one, Grand Theft Auto 5. Whoa. I credit you. Talking about it on this show. Hey, nobody you're, had, you're no, welcome, Rockstar. Nobody was playing Grand Dan Theft Hauser Auto didn't online. believe in you. I did. Uh, number two. <laughs> Dan Hauser. <didn't> <laughs> number two, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Number three. Here you go. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Hey. Uh, that, of course, coming out uh, January 17th, 2020. So that, you know, just what, half a month on under its belt being able to get number three in there. I mean, apparently nothing else came out in January. Also true. To this list. Yeah, yeah. Number four, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. Riding that Netflix love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Still out there cracking on it. Uh, number five, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Number six, Madden NFL 20. Number seven, Minecraft. Number eight, EA Sports UFC 3. Number nine, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And number 10, Pay wi- Payday 2 Crime Wave. Edition. Wow, people love that payday still. I guess yeah. I didn't realize Starbreeze people... begging for it. Just somebody <laughs> buy this thing, please. I didn't realize people love payday on consoles. I always oh, yeah. saw it as a PC game. Really? really? So. People love payday. Everywhere. Payday? Don't worry yeah. about it. Payday all day, every day. Did you play payday? No, my cousin really likes payday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> payday one, I think, was PC exclusive. I think no. it, was, it wasn't no, until no, that's that's true. really. Right. No, yeah, I remember at IGN we did that. We did multiplayer stuff with it on PlayStation. Yep. I wonder why I. Because you're a PC dork. You yeah, just don't PC want to admit it. I guess, yeah. Hey, pay PlayStation next. VR games, exactly the same as always. Beat Saber, number one. Number two, Super Hot. Number three, Job Simulator. Number four, Arizona Sunshine. Number five, Surgeon Simulator. Number six, Creed Rise of Glory. Number seven, Doom. Uh, number eight, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim VR. Uh, number nine, Vacation Simulator. Number ten, Drunken Bar Fight. Just right. same old games forever. You know what I mean? But again, what are you going to say? What's been announced? This one I found interesting. Free-to-play games. Number one, of course, Fortnite. But mm-hmm. number two, Darwin Project. Whoa. Another game you made famous. Yeah. You know? You're welcome. You're over here a tastemaker. You, you know? That game is really good. Like, the more I think about the game, like, out of all the games we played for that segment, for the ranking the 1,000 whatever games, yeah. this is the one that I see on my dashboard, and I'm like, I want to get back to that. I haven't, but I do want to go back to it and play some One day you're coming I, back to Darwin Project. For well, sure. Probably. Yeah. Okay. The game was fun. Okay, good. I'm glad you liked it. But yeah, a, a quiet January. You know what I mean? This is why uh, I so many people remember wanted to fill that dying light void. When dying light found that, hey, man, if we put our game out super early in the mm. first half of a new year, people buy it a lot. And they, so I really tried to do that, and they just keep pushing, keep yeah. pushing, keep pushing. I mean, Dragon, you, Ball, Dragon Ball Z you. made it. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly. Yeah. If Dragon Ball fucking Z can make it, it's got Kaka on its name, and it's up there. You know what <laughs> there I mean? You go. <laughs> kidding me over here. Bless. Yes. We reshuffled the show, so what you been playing? Oh man! All right, Greg, do you want me to talk about new things or things that I've talked about before? On Give the me. Show? Let's. We'll both start with new things, okay? And then we'll move into old things. Sounds good. So I played that Persona Five Scramble. Ooh. Yeah, you did. That came out in Japan. Yeah, downloaded it. Uh, didn't understand a word of it, but I was blown away. Now this is the this. one. This is like the uh, the Bushido or whatever the uh, the Mus- Muso. Muso Muso game. No, yeah, yeah no, that's that is like yeah. Dynasty Warriors, yeah, the Hyrule yeah. Warriors. And upon seeing like the first trailers for it, I was like, okay, I don't know if this is gonna be for me. This looks like I'm not really been 
a Musou game person. I've never played a Dynasty Warriors, never played a Hyrule Warriors. I never really, that's not really been my jam. And so I looked at it and I was like, I want to try this game out. We'll see because I really love Persona 5. Yeah. Played the demo and it's incredible. Like it's What's incredible about it? It's basically Persona 5 too. Like oh. it's, it's basically a sequel to Persona, Persona 5. It picks up where Persona 5 ended and the gameplay is pretty much the same outside of the dungeons and the combat. Like it has the overworld stuff of Persona 5 where you are, where you are exploring the world, you're you're talking to characters. It has like the same style, like visual style. It has the same um, like visual novel like when you when you click through the text and it has like the same effects like the the speech bubbles. Like yeah, yeah. all that stuff this is the same and it almost it it plays like it's a sequel to Persona 5 outside of when you get into the combat and the combat is like an action game instead of a instead of a um a turn-based rpg yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and so it's, it's surprising i i mean i can't tell you anything about the plot because i don't read japanese Fair. but like the there are some new characters that all seem pretty cool by their design uh the music is is, is it's the same music but there are some remixes and the it's remixes dope slap. As fuck. oh my god they're there's, so good there's a remix to last surprise which is the combat theme to persona 5 yeah and it is better than Last Surprise, which is the thing. Damn, that I, son. I, it's something I didn't realize could happen because Last Surprise is one of the best songs in that game. And it's very fitting of like how well they they remix that like battle song because because the combat is different this time around, but. It's not the bones of the turn based mechanics yes. from Persona are still there. Like, they're still all out attacks. You still have your gun. Um, yeah, like they, different they, Persona things are like uh, weak to different elements that you yeah, can use they in translate, combat. They translate all the combat elements from Persona 5, from base Persona 5 yeah. into Persona 5 Scramble, and they all work very well. It's and crazy. so, like, you know how in Persona 5. If you get an attack with on an enemy with an element that, that, that they're weak with, you then get an extra turn. Yeah. Right? And you, then you can do your all-out attack. Like, they take that and they put it into this action-based combat to where now, as you're fighting, right, you're doing this action stuff, you have, like, a million enemies on screen, you're fighting them, you can press a variable button, but you can press, like, R1 or something to then bring up uh, your, like, your menu to pick a persona attack that you want to like oh, throw out there right okay. and so like there are some enemies that are gonna and it's like an area of effects so you bring up like an area of effect freeze time thing um and so, certain enemies will be weak to certain attacks so you can then click the attack that they'll be weak to and you know you'll use that move and then it'll like stun them and then you can do your all-out attack which is a great way to translate the persona 5 combat to this new game um yeah, like it, Barrett said, like they have the the gun, they have like a, like pretty much everything that's there in Persona Five, the combat system, like just the remixed combat a system. Bit, it's know? remixed and it's and it's translated to an action game, and they do it very well. Yeah, and so I was pretty pretty surprised about that. I'm I'm excited to see what the story has going for it. Yeah, it's like it's all in Japanese. You're you like turned over to me and like, hey, is there any possible way of, like English subtitles? I was like, yeah, yeah no, you can't. Because I was that. like, I really want to know what was going on. I, I, I tried to have it like, uh, you know, like you have like the Google Translate app. I was trying to like go through, but it was Figure so it, it was yeah, it was no. really bad. Um, but yeah, it, it seems to pick up shortly after the events of the end of Persona Five, um, which is exciting. Cause yeah, it seems like more of a sequel to Persona Five than even like Persona uh, Five Royal. Like, well, that's not really a, obviously like, but that's not really a sequel though. That's just like yeah, a more of an expansive more, version of Persona Five. Yes, but more, more what I mean is like it seems like even more. It's is the it additional, more? Is it more than the dancing games? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. In yeah. terms of the story, and like it's a, se- a true sequel. Yeah, and okay. like, and this is so. something like uh like I think the trailer showed a little bit of a couple months ago where it shows you exploring Japan and like going back to these areas that you okay. explored in the yeah. original game. A little different and stuff like the area where uh, like the cafe is and it's definitely a little tighter. Not as many like air like shops or anything to go into. But I won't. You know, like the demo is only like the first uh, like. 30 minutes of the game. first, like, hour. Yeah, and so I imagine from what we've seen from trailers, they're going to be, there's going to be a lot more, there's going to be a lot of, Yeah, I do wonder if there's going to be confidant stuff, like, the social links. I wonder if they're going to have that. I wonder if if you are going to have, like, the day cycle of being able to do one thing and then the next thing and then go to sleep and then do do that all again. Uh, I didn't really see hints of that in this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's there because it plays legitimately like like a new... Persona 5. It yeah. even has, like, the animated... Like, you know how they'd have the different types of animation in Persona 5 as far as, like, okay, here's your in-game, like, you're in the world walking around, but then also here's a cutscene where we're, like, going a bit 
like we're they're throwing a bit more graphics into this cutscene. <laughs> like yeah. We're turning the graphics slider a bit up for this oh, cutscene. Okay. They have that here, and then they have the actual true like anim- anime. anime animation here, and it looks like and it looks almost better. Really good. Like it was <laughs> yeah. like I was playing it uh, like uh, on the Switch, but like uh, undocked and stuff. And it was just one of those frustrating things. I, I tweeted out about it the night I played it. It's just like. This game is such a proving ground for why Persona 5 belongs on this fucking console. And I know this is a PlayStation. We love PlayStation here on this podcast. But, like, for the love of God, Persona 5 on the Switch, it just, like, it felt at home playing Scramble on that console. And it's, mm-hmm. like, very upsetting that I don't think we're ever going to get it. But whatever. Yeah. And I guess also what I mean when I say, like, it feels more like a sequel uh, than Persona 5 Royal, even though Persona 5 Royal isn't a sequel technically. But it feels like it's more additional story content than mm. we're going to get from Persona 5 Royal. Mm. Like, this stuff feels It's a whole new story. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole new story taking place after the events of Persona 5, right? And Royal has, is adding stuff to the events of Persona 5. Sure. But I'm shocked by how much seems to be here. I don't know how long the game's going to be also, but however long it is in fact i hope it's not as long as persona 5 because persona 5 took me 120 hours i don't want to do that again yeah. i'm gonna look up like how long these other like uh mushu games Muso are games. Yeah. the thing though is like and i've not played them but it seems structurally like it's different from other Muso oh, games yeah, because yeah. i feel like for other Mus- Muso games it's like mission by mission whereas this is very much like no we're th- these are the bones of persona and we're just injecting some of this some of these combat systems into this game as opposed to centering the game around like oh yeah you go to this mission and do the pers- you you fight the evil um, which Shadow. shadows, yeah, from Persona. It seems less of that and more so like, oh no, we're actually playing Persona. Still no Western release date on this, right? Still no this is Japanese release date. I'm gonna imagine no. it's gonna be five or six months from now. That's what they usually do. Like uh, Royal came out. What Royal's coming out next, or late this month, ne- or sometime next? It's it's, Mar- it's March, March, isn't it? Right around yeah. uh, Animal Crossing. It released in Japan. I want to say September, November of last year. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised though if it came out next year if they were like i would, really I would want- be i would be very surprised if they i mean i don't long. i don't know how much they would want two persona games to come out in the same year i don't think they give a shit and like i know like <laughs> um i i i wouldn't be surprised if it, we saw july or august and i know that's getting more into that's, like i i don't think we'll see it in, I, ju- in july i think i think we could see it in the fall no, I think I, fall, I, I don't know if they want to go against up uh, against all yeah, of the huge. Yeah, which is also games. why I think we see ne- we see it next year instead. Like I think no. I think saying July is way too soon, and then fall you do get into that competition. But I feel like time frame wise, I could see it. Being why don't you see it in July? In July? Yeah, I don't know. I think that's too soon. Like especially I mean, coming after Persona Five Royal, I feel like that's it's five that's mu- quite a bit. I mean, think about it this way though. Like, uh, what was it? Five months ago, Persona Five Royal came out in Japan. Yeah. And now Scramble's coming out in Japan in like a couple of weeks in uh, in February. So that's like that's the in same. March. No, Scramble's coming out this month in. Japan. Oh, in Japan, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like that's the same kind of distance in between games. You know, like I don't think again, I don't think mm-hmm. they really care about like that thing and i think the mindset that they're probably thinking of right is that persona 5 royal is coming here first right and so that'll give people people to replay the story again new people to come in and stuff and now it's like all right now that you beat that game here is like a sequel now we're bringing it to the u.s and i think i I think july august will probably Mm -hmm. be the best time they think will be to bring that over here we'll see God bless him. We'll so. see. Uh, I've also been playing Apex Legends Season 4, sure. Assimilation. Sure. Uh, it's pretty fun. I I like Revenant, who's the new hero character, or legend that they've added. Um, I have i don't think I'm going to like stick with him too much. He seems, for me, he seems fine. Like, his passive ability. Who is your main? Uh, my main, I switch around between Bloodhound and Lifeline. Lifeline is like the healer character. Bloodhound is like a tracker okay. kind of character. Uh, Revenant is more... Like I didn't really understand Revenant's ultimate ability, where he like puts down a totem, and that then allows your characters, like your team, to live more. But he has he has that he has like a grenade that like eliminates people's uh, special attacks if they get caught in that vicinity, and then he can like climb walls high. Uh, he seems cool. I like his design more than I really like using him. Yeah. Um. But you know, he seems overall like a decent addition. I've, I I've not really gotten to read for how people feel about him in general, but for me, he seems he seems all right. Um. I, I don't like this map. That that, that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I think that's what I've come down on playing Apex for the last week. Is that um, this is the second map that they've that they've added to the game? This game started off in Kings Canyon. They switched to this map at the beginning of season three, and uh, 
for season four they tweaked it a bit and they like had like a whole event where like now there are like chasms that are opening up that you can fall in and there there are some chasms there before but i guess now the 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 map has opened up <laughs> even more gotcha um i don't like how i don't like getting around in this map i, th- I think uh actual the actual exploration and traversal and stuff can get kind of annoying when you uh when you just want to like cut through a map and, and cut through to the next destination and it feels like you have so many obstacles kind of sure. getting in your way i think that sucks and then i also think people's argument against death stranding oh yeah <laughs> yeah um but then also like i just think the the new map compared to king's canyon is not as interesting like king's canyon i can name you like a bunch of different areas like king's canyon has like the swamp that is different from the airport that's different from uh skull town that's different from relay and like all these areas feel distinct and feel like their own multiplayer maps Right, it feels like it's a. It feels like they're putting these like small Call of Duty maps, you know, within this one huge map, and it feels great. Whereas this map, I feel like a lot of the different areas kind of bleed together for me. Gotcha. And even the ones that are more unique, I don't necessarily find myself uh, either falling in love with them or or having memorable experiences in them. And so, like, I I plan to play more uh, Apex Legends because overall, I'm still having fun with the game. It's still it's the game I still go to I was to hang say, out with you, friends. You can't quit now. No, you no, come way too deep. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna quit. But it's one of those things where I hope next season they switch up the map, or they bring back Kings Canyon, or they they do something, um, because I'm 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 kind of I'm I'm starting to, I'm starting to get tired, I'm starting to get tired of this map. <laughs> I'm wearing out. I'm wearing out. But gotcha. you know, I'm this season seems seems cool. They they and I don't want to go too in depth because I know most people don't play Apex Legends who listen to the show. But they changed up ammo types. Okay. Which is the thing oh that's wow, kinda, that's always a big. It's problem, a thing yeah. that's that's irked me a bit because now snipers have their own ammo, and uh, I. Usually I'll roll, and pe- people play in Apex will know, right? Usually I roll uh, 301 Carbine, which is like an automatic like light weapon gun, and then I also roll Peacekeeper, which is a shotgun. And the thing I liked about it is that, you know, with the shared ammo types before that we had, you know, where some snipers would take energy, some snipers would take light, some some snipers would take heavy ammo. Yeah. With that, you know, you kind of had more... You could have variety if you want to. Like, if I decide, like, okay, well, right now I've been collecting a bunch of light ammo, but I have two light guns, so I'm going to switch one of these for a sniper and, and test that out. Now, if you want to if you want to roll sniper, you have to know that you want to roll sniper because now all snipers have sniper ammo. Um, except for the G7 Scout, which I guess now isn't a sniper anymore, which somebody can explain that to me. But um, Dork. I'm still going to play that game because I, I love Apex Legends. Uh, it's still fun, but that's kind of how I feel about the season so far. I'm not necessarily blown away sure sure and so um aside from that oh uh, well now do you want me to start talking about things i've talked about before on the show or do you want to go i'll talk about a new game all right talk about it blood roots oh uh-huh. i've also played blood roots i know you've been playing some blood roots. good i want to hear it. uh of course full disclosure of course uh, my wife uh, works at pop agenda pop agenda is working pr and marketing on blood roots uh that's not news to you and also you probably know that i don't talk about my wife's games most of the time because usually she doesn't work on stuff that i care about uh mm-hmm. but blood roots is the exception barrett i sent you the party mode in slack if you want to toss it up for people to see uh we had done a uh, it's on kind of funny control in order to, do i send it somewhere else there you got it um, Blood Roots has come through, uh, what, March of last year, actually, around GDC. Uh, came through and did a party mode with us, and so that's what we're tossing up here if you are uh, a visual listener as well. Uh, if you're an audio listener only, though, uh, Blood Roots and Indie coming from a uh, studio called Paper Cult Games. Uh, we're embargoed right now to talk about, uh, we can talk about up uh, through Act 1. Yeah. Uh, today was the announcement that February 28th is going to be the release date on this game. Uh, if you're not watching right now and seeing uh, us run around and die a lot, it's Nick playing. Um, <laughs> The idea here, right, is uh, what I would call it a cartoony, revenant, Jackie Chan, John yeah. Wick m- mashup, right? Stylistically, almost reminds me of Samurai Jack. Right. Uh, I think the, in the easiest, I mean, even though the visual art style is very different, it's very, it ha- you can feel the Hotline Miami in it. Yes. Where it is run into a, an area, you know, not a room, because usually you're out in the outdoors, you see like this is like the revenant part of it as you run around and like using an axe to bludgeon people to death. But you run in here, you fight all these people, once you've killed everyone in the area, you get told to go, you go to the next area and you do it again. Mm-hmm. And the idea is as you play and we were very bad at it in this party mode because we didn't know what we were doing is to keep this combo going and have this uh, basically free flow chain of action and combat as you go to it go from one person to the other keep your combos up get really inc- crazy high scores while picking up anything you can any, pick up anything in the environment to use as a weapon mm-hmm. so you know there's hatchets there's sabers there's ladders as you see right here uh, you're invulnerable to fire so you can spread fire around the environment use that to kill people set traps there's guns there's 
there's grappling hooks, there's the chain jump we just saw, there's a fish you can suffocate people with. Uh, the list goes on like this. When we had played it here for party mode, I was like, okay, yeah, this game's dope. Mm -hmm. I get it. I like it. Uh, I loved Hotline Miami. And playing it, Hotline Miami would be that thing where I'd eventually get not frustrated, but frustrated. Where you know yeah. you get to that room like, fuck, I cannot do this. And I put it down and walk away. And so when I, we did the party mode for it and we were playing early stuff in the game, I was like, I feel like I'm going to have that same vibe here where I'll play for a while go through eventually it's going to get too hard it's going to get too much into high scores i won't want to replay it, blah, blah blah all that jazz and I'll, I'll walk away from this game uh even though i'm embargoed i can tell you i've beaten it i've beaten really? blood roots yeah dang dude dude i uh, it's all i did this weekend really like, on on dang. on saturday right yeah i mm. just sat there and played like the game's incredible mm. and it's it's so far above and beyond my expectations of it um i what it does is challenge you for sure. Oh, they, yeah. like they, you know, I have the ones where it'll show you how long it took you to beat the level, and they're up there, and I have an F on it. Like you know what I mean? Like it, they yeah. grade you and want you to come back and do it again. Um, it is so much fun to play. It is so funny. It is so charming. It um, keeps you on your toes, both in terms of the action, in terms of the environments, in terms of every other thing I could tell you about it. Like it went, just when you're like you think you've seen it all it'll do something it'll, it'll change the gameplay completely and have you play a different way mm -hmm. and so yeah like i mean even just again for act one is all we're talking about but like act one was so much fun you're playing yeah. it too what do you think yeah I, I i agree i think the game is really good like playing act one i'm not even finished act one i'm on, I'm on like act one three or one four yeah you know, somewhere there i don't know how long an, an act is yeah but um i really do like the progression of picking up new items because the whole the whole gameplay loop is you are picking up items to then uh, get hits on enemies, and then you're finding there are items spread out like all through each each map, and you're yeah. picking up different ones to try and get hits on enemies to take them out that way. And it's one hit, you know, like yep. a Hotline Miami game type of game would be. Um, but you're one hit as well. You're one hit as well, right? Yeah. And this last year, I played uh, Katana Zero. I played my friend Pedro. I played Ape Out. Um, I feel like there's one I'm missing, but there have been quite a few Hotline Miami likes that I've oh, played yeah. Oh, yeah. over the last year. Um, and I'm glad to say that like this one is definitely like this one. This one is a great one. Like I like the, I like the ways in which they they um, keep the keep the tone light. Yep. You know, because it's very e like I feel like it's very easy to kind of go for like that dark. You know, like grimy. Like oh, we're here, one shot, you're dead. Right. This this game is almost like a comedy where yeah, you are 100%. like picking up just the most random of things. Like like carrots, I think carrots. Yeah. Like I think they were showing in the video that you can pick up like a ladder and like swing it around. Yeah. yeah which yeah. I've been doing a lot. Also, the game gets very hard. Yeah. You said that before, but like, I'm at a place now within the first act where I'm like, I'm frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Um, which I like because I like the idea of it. Playing this game reminds me actually a lot of playing. This is going to be a weird comparison, but, but playing Doom, like playing the Doom preview where totally. they're talking about combat chess and talking yep. about like solving whatever situation you're in. I feel a similar way playing this game where I am like, okay, I've gone through this 10 times because like each. It's pretty quick. This game is pretty quick as far yep. as like you going into a room and trying to clear these enemies out, and you'll die pretty quick, and you'll restart pretty quick. And so like I've gone through a certain area like ten times, and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Because there's just one thing. I'm, pro I'm like, there's there's a part where I'm not stopping that I should stop to look and be like, okay, what can I pick up here that'll allow me to get to the next part? Because like you're pretty you're pretty vulnerable if you don't have something like an item with you to take out an enemy. Your punches are slow. Yeah, your punches are so slow. So you can swing stuff really quickly and take off fat enemies, but your punches are slow, so it's a timing thing, or if you throw the punch too early, you're fucked. Yeah, you're like whenever you get into a room, like your first instinct is, what can I pick up right now yeah, exactly. to take somebody out, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so like the, the, the process of getting into an area and being like okay what are my options around here and figuring out what that puzzle is of like okay how do i pick out so there are four guys here i got a carrot which can get one hit i got an axe that can get me three hits and i got this thing over here that can give me a certain amount of hits how do i take out all these dudes it's a very fun fun loop and i think they the way in which they progress it and make it more and more hard uh they do it pretty well yeah, and like you bring up something that I, I should have said that I think nails it is, is it is that Doom combat chess, mm -hmm. which I do I think makes so much sense. Where it, it's, I got frustrated and like at one point when uh, I forget what Lucy came out of her room to do over the weekend, but she's like, "What are you playing?" By the way, I was like, "Oh, it's Blood She's like, "Oh, this is what's been giving you trouble?" Because I'm cursing, <laughs> right? I'm like, yeah. "Fucking goddamn!" But it's not the 
it's what I love in a video game where I'm going, fucking god damn it. Not because the game's being cheap, because I did something wrong. Yeah. Right? I didn't grab the I You're know like, why am I broken? <laughs> exactly. I know exactly what I need to do. And it's because of trial and error. Like I know that when I come in, I have to grab the bucket, hit that guy, throw the vase at that guy, then grab the knife and then go get those guys. And then when you get on the other you know, it's that thing of you learn as you go, trial and error, figuring it all out. But then when you screw up the little thing, you know, you miss that jump you've nailed a hundred other times, but you try to do it right here, you're like, fucking god damn it. Yeah. I know how to do this. Why can't I do it? Yeah. So the game's pretty fun. Although one thing the one thing I'll say is that so far, I'm still in act one. Yeah. I'm not necessarily like into the the story. Sure. Like it seems like very much like a like a backdrop yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. you playing. And so yeah. like it's fine. But like they, they start off with a thing and I'm just like I don't know what, what like how I'm supposed to feel or like what's what's happening right now, um, but you know overall like for it, for it to have the tone that it has, you know, which is more light, I'm pretty fine with it. And so yeah, exactly, and I think that's it's like you said, it is background. It's just enough to give you right. Like you start at you know yeah. you you've all been left for dead basically, right? And then you're gonna go after the squad, your crew that you were running with, hmm. and so yeah. They're goofy enough so far from what we've seen in Act One, and whatever. But yeah, it's all about the gameplay for me. I think honestly, I, I like it more than Hotline Miami. Really? Like I, yeah. Wow. I, I lo- and I loved Hotline Miami. I'm not trying to take a shot at it at all. Mm. I still do love my Hotline Miami. But like this one, Hotline Miami, like I said, I was able to put down and like walk away, and then months later come back and chip away. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, I I got to go. And then after I finished it, like I am not a high score person, mm-hmm. and I am not you going like for it? yeah, exactly. There's I, like I four right scores back. on there though. I, well, I know, but I mean, for me, like just me of the thing oh, of like, getting a book, oh, okay. I got a, you got a, you got an F, you got a D minus on this. So I'm like, I want to go back and get it. Or like gotcha. the fact that like they, there's hidden collectible or there's a, a hidden collectible, not in every level, but there's these black wolves you've seen or heard of them, I think. Yeah. And they're out there or whatever. And like, so when you look at your stats, you can see if you've uh, unlocked the black wolf or if you've unlocked the, the hats, hats are hidden there. I think they're score based. I'm not even sure. Mm-hmm. But I, I when I see those, like I was like, oh, I got to go back. I gotta go back and try to get them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. Um, but old stuff. What have you been playing? That's old. I'm playing more GTA. Of course. Uh, I actually linked up with some best friends. Oh, we nice. Did a, we did a heist, which is pretty fun. Yeah. We I we I haven't played as much as I wanted to with with best friends, uh, because the one night we did a heist, that heist actually took us a, a, a little bit of time to to get done. Yeah. And so it was like the for people who play GTA Online, it was the prison heist, and I was on the last mission, and it was definitely the one. I I think what I realized is that that's definitely like one of the more Difficult heists, even though it's like the first one they give you. That's the like, f- that's the only heist I've ever tried to do in GTA Online, and it was so damn frustrating. Did you get and to the end of it? No, we got like. Or did you do the and setups, and it, and or it, do the actual heist heist, or did you? We you did the, the heist heist. We did okay. the setups, and then we tried the heist heist. And the thing is, like, I rolled with like, I, I was in like a group of two guys. We were in like a gang or whatever, right? I forget what they call them in GTA Online, but like Cruise. Yeah. crews. And then, but I think you need four people for that heist. And so we had to have, like, a random fourth person who didn't have a mic, like, come in and play with us. And uh, see, I was running with that worst. person. Like, they split you up in two and two. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this is, like, fucking, like, three or four years ago uh, that this was happening. Where I was paired with the guy who didn't have the mic. And so, like, oh. I'm trying to, And I think we were doing some complicated shit. So we kept failing and failing and failing. I was like, you know what? I'm never doing heist again. This shit sucks. Yeah, no, that's the worst. Like, and it was definitely that situation not like not that situation of, of it was a bad thing but yeah. it was one of those things where it's like all right who's done this heist before who's not done this heist before yeah. all right so who you gotta can, like who, learn the ins and outs yeah of, like, like, how like it works. it's like okay let's figure out like who's good at what and mm-hmm. when i f- i was leading the heist so when i first started up i forgot that i had to choose who did what and so it was uh, kind of randomized and so like i should have been the one who was flying in the first place right but i wasn't i was the one down in the prison shooting i started blasting yeah see i think that that's what <laughs> so i was I doing. Blasting. yeah so uh and um mm-hmm. and I definitely like yeah, at a certain point we lost like I think the third or fourth time in a row and I was like okay guys let's let's switch this up like I'll fly because I'm pretty confident in my flying ability and that's mm-hmm. when we're able to get it done but it's one of those things where I want to go back and do I haven't done the doomsday heist and I haven't done the casino heist and those are like the new ones that they've added over time and so I, I want to keep doing that I plan to it's just a time thing of like so many games being played right now. It's weird. There's like no games coming out, but I'm playing a lot of games, which is not a thing I've, I I usually do. But I guess it's uh it's been You don't here. play a lot of games? I mean, not I mean, like not when there's not a, a great amount of stuff coming out. It's like, been a weird spring or I guess not spring, geez, January. first half of the year yeah. or whatever. Yeah, cuz I'm in the same boat where again, like yeah, you're talking about old stuff. Of course, I talked about it last week and it happened. I'm back in DC Universe online. And it's that thing of, yeah, like Actually having this moment to catch your breath right now because there's mm. the onslaught's coming, right? Oh, yeah. Like I really do feel tonight with dreams, like well, 4 a.m. 
to, with Dreams. Yeah. Or Dreams is out right now as you listen to this at early access holders, right? Like, that's the first 2020 game where I'm like, oh, I guess Blood Roots, but that caught me completely off guard. But, mm-hmm. you know, it is like, that's the, one of the ones I've been waiting for. I'm excited to dive in. I'm excited to chase all the trophies. Like, I can't yeah. wait to get fully invested in it. But with that lead up to it, it has been like, oh, man, like, I guess I can fuck around DC Universe Online, right? Like, oh, yeah. I, I guess I can start uh, Hellblade. I guess I can do all these yeah, that's my things thing, right? that would usually just sit on my carousel and never get used. Like, the fact that I'm playing Apex Legends, GTA, and Bloodborne. Yeah. It's a weird, that's a weird month for me. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's also a good month. So, like, I've been playing Bloodborne, more Bloodborne, sure. since last week. I beat the Bloodstar Beast, which I'm really excited about. Bloodstar Beast was... Not friendly. <laughs> that thing. I think it's in tough. his name. <laughs> yeah, like no, like that thing was blood starved for real. And it's one of those things where I feel like I almost prefer being in the loop of dying to a boss rather than actually like exploring the map in Bloodborne. Because okay. now that I've beat, like, it took me a, a week to beat Blood Starved Beast, right? And it was one of those things where when like, you say that is for me, Greg Miller, who yeah. didn't get far in Bloodborne. Oil, what does that mean? How many attempts is that? Is that like? Are you trying every uh, night no, for a couple hours? No. Okay. I'm in. It's one of those things. Since I'm playing all, all these other games, I'm only coming into it like a little bit at a time, which yeah. is why it took me a week. Is because sure, sure. like I would come in and be, and, me, and I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna spend what like 30 minutes to 45 minutes since I have this time here, and I'm gonna try and beat the Blood Star Beast. And so like it probably took me overall probably like 10 tries. Which, okay. Which okay. like doesn't sound crazy. I guess it's not. I guess that's not crazy. <laughs> but for me, I felt like it took forever, because uh, like when I'm losing to when I'm losing to this boss, it feels like there's no way. Um, but I was able to I was able, able to make it happen. But it's one of those things where I like the process of being in a loop with a boss and being like, okay, how am I gonna beat this thing? Like, what are their animations? Like, what yeah, do I yeah, need yeah, to yeah. do? I really like that loop in Bloodborne more than the actual exploration and okay. traversal and stuff. I understand you. Because like now that I'm now that I've beaten Blood Starved Beast, I started playing again, and I was like, oh, man, this game's really scary. Like, this game's terrifying just to explore, and the game wants you to explore, which is this thing that I'm conflicted with, right? Like, it's fun. It's exhilarating. It's an experience, but at the same time, I'm like, I almost don't – I almost rather be fighting a boss and losing than to be exploring this world because everything in this world wants to kill you, yeah. and everything, everything about the visual and aesthetic design of this world is meant to make you feel – fear and unease and it's working on me 100 <laughs> percent. and so i'm like trying to like walk around and i'm hearing s- loud screeches screeches that i thought were the blood star beast turns out it's not the blood star beast they're just screeches that are in the world and every time i hear these screeches i'm like i don't want to keep doing this because there's something about there's something about their like that audio audio design mixed with I mean, I guess mixed with the visual design, but also mixed with that feeling of at any moment something can pop out of somewhere and just murder me and I lose all my progress yeah. or all my blood echoes, which is like your experience. I lose all that. And that gets that gets the blood pumping. There's like a it's certain stressful, there's man. a certain exhilaration and yeah, yeah, stress that comes with it that is dreadful, but also you know, it feels nice to feel to feel something. It sounds it's, it, it, <laughs> it's, <laughs> you sadistic motherfucker. It reminds me of RE2, right? Like yeah, that no, was the way exactly of RE2, that. where it was like I'm having a really good time right now, but I haven't been back in this room a while. So is there a liquor in here now? Yeah, uh, I think I know where the uh, the zombie usually is. Can I? I'm low, but I know there's health back there. Can I get to it and get out before they get me? Yeah, yeah. And so it's def- it's definitely that mixed with more. Um, uh, like more to lose. Sure. Oh yeah. You know? Totally. Because totally. at least like in Resident that. Evil, like you definitely yeah. you can. There's a like, safe state. There's a safe state. Back. All that stuff. And but there's this like that similar feeling of like oh man something can pop out of wherever. But then with Bloodborne, it's like something can pop out of wherever and just ruin my day. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, which is definitely like a a multi layered kind of fear. You know, which feels nice to feel, Barry. <laughs> you know, feeling something. You're crazy man. Like I I can I can deal with that. To play a Star Wars game just because I love Star Wars, but to deal with that and then also be and then, like, spooked, horror? yeah, not no, it's just, no, it's a different kind of no, feeling I that I'm it. liking. I didn't realize I would like this feeling, but I do. You should play it's Dark Souls. Over. Play what now? Dark Souls. No. He said no, Barrett. Sorry, we tried. The aesthetic doesn't appeal to to me as much as like Bloodborne, but it's less spooky. I know. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been up to. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, more DC Universe Online on top of that. 
uh, that uh, it, it's you know thanks to every kind of funny best friend who's gone and joined the kind of funny league. Uh, oh my I god! Started the kind of funny league. A whole bunch of people want to be a part of it. I'm still adding. Uh, I we need to pick a time where I'll just be on because it's still so archaic that I I have to be online. You have to send me a message. I have to send you the thing. Do the whole thing. I can't mm. just invite your PSN name. That'd be too simple or whatever. But yeah, playing a lot of that. It took me like I did one full night of just my inventory. Like, do I still need this thing? What does this thing do? Google what this thing is in my inventory. All right, no, that's that's decrepit. That doesn't work anymore. Go um, through, find the best armor, put all that stuff on. But now I'm on a good track of jumping on there, doing my duos, getting in there. Getting how long is this going to last? I not, I, it's back to what we're talking about. Of, With dreams. Exactly. Like, I think that, again, there's so much stuff about to pop in terms of content. There's so many things that are about to get updates or move on and do this uh, that I think, yeah, it's going to be very interesting where I think dreams is going to be really fascinating because I want to play dreams. I want to get really invested in it. We were having this conversation after the stream, right? Yeah. Of, uh, you, we want to go in there and play it. We want to explain it. So even you were saying like, I played so much during early access. Yeah. I'm not sure what it's going to come yeah, out. Yeah. Like I'm not even like, I'm like, I'm excited, but I'm not as excited as I would be if I didn't play right. it for the last year already. And see, that's my whole thing is that I held off on purpose for this moment so that when the trophies are there and the media molecule story is there, I can go in and actually really get going with dreams. But even that I feel is going to be like, well, how many, how many dreams am I going to want to play a night before I do want to fuck off and play DC Universe online or mm -hmm. check in with Borderlands or, you know, go back and try to screw around with Blood Roots or worry about whatever the next big game is or big update is going to be? Mm -hmm. Like, how long it'll last? I don't know. And that's my, that, it's a great question because even now I'm like, leading up to this episode of PSLW, I was like, I need to set a time and a date where I'll be on and you can just come and send me the tell to Taylor Swift so I can add you to the league or whatever. Mm. But like I look at, you know, I'm going to dice or whatever to host the awards this week. And so then I'm going to be back and it's Valentine's day and then it's the weekend. And it's like, well, if I've played no dreams all week, I'm definitely going to want to, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. want to binge it on this, the weekend. So yeah. like when would I actually want to sign on for two hours and accept requests for the league or whatever? Yeah. I Keep mean, following that, on Twitter. I definitely feel like the, you know, the juggle of apex and GTA and bloodborne right now can all, it can all disintegrate totally. You know, once schemes actually start coming out, yeah. which is like a, a f almost a fear I'm having because I don't want to drop off of Bloodborne because that's a game that coming back to it after like months oh, no will way. probably ruin me. Do you think you're uh, why not bite down, commit, just play Blood Bloodborne until it's done, or is that just not how you want to consume Bloodborne? I that's not how I want to. I yeah, that's not how I want to consume Bloodborne. Yeah. like that's a game that I kind of want to. I want it to last because I, I I feel like not committing fully to it for like a, a week or two period is allowing me to in, enjoy it more because I could see myself getting super frustrated if I'm like beating myself over the head. Yeah. Like if I'm just like stuck on a boss and I'm like, I'm trying to beat this boss and it's been however many days and I feel like I'm making no progress. I can see myself getting frustrated to the point of hating it. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen. And so that's why I'm kind of stretching it out. And I also want to play these other games. Of course. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see. Uh, for DC, how long I stick around, and because I'd like to get even more invested in it, because they are doing so much cool shit. Where like you know, it, we had done a uh, first impression before it was first impression that I do believe is up as a gameplay stream on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, where uh, SJ came by when the Switch stuff had launched after a while, and we talked about it, and we played with Taylor Swift, my character from PS4, dusting it off, and her explaining to me how they redid everything where it is this idea of you know the old thing for dc was it's an mmo so you had to you know work for the highest you're grinding for that best gear so you can go run the raid to get more of the best gear and stuff like that which is still the case if you want it to be but now they have lifted it where it's like cool i think it's weekly or, but it might be monthly of like cool this is the episode that's available to everyone and if you are level 10 or whatever or maybe level 30 if you've beaten it or you're me or your max level mm -hmm. you can all go play this and it buffs you to the correct level so you can enjoy it and get rewards that suit your character and su your pursuit so it's like literally the problem with it before was like you know you'd play for hours on end and feel like you barely made any progress whereas now if i just pop in even if it is just gonna be once a week twice a week or whatever and just run a couple things i'll feel like i'm getting some progress i'm still part of the world and community mm -hmm. or whatever but we'll see how long it actually lasts before i get distracted by the next big thing bless yes there's some other stuff we've been playing there are it falls in to a segment we call 104 PSN Games Ranked. Each and every week, uh, Bless and I read through the drop in the PlayStation blog and piss, uh, piss and pick a new PSN game to play. The next week, we report back and rank the games in one giant ridiculous li risk, uh, list. God, I'm, I'm falling apart. Rules are, we can't pick the same game. It can't be something that's AAA, and it shouldn't be something we're going to play anyway. So, like, you know, no after party. I don't know why that's the reference I always do. 
But you understand what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying. Here's what the list is so far, everybody. Number one, Darwin Project. Number two, Foxy Land 2. Number three, It Came From Space and Ate Our Brains. Number four, Earth Night. Number five, Graveyard Keeper. Number six, Eclipse Edge of Light. Number seven, Music Racer. And number eight, Brain Breaker. This week, I picked Zombie Army 4, Dead War. You picked Throw Anything. Yep, for PSVR. Oh, oh, I forgot that part of it. Yeah. Yeah, All right, cool. Tell me about Throw Anything. So this was a game that i picked because it looked like a fun time and it Uh-oh. was a fun time oh okay good <laughs> yeah. i didn't like where that conversation was yeah, going okay no, good. like legit like and that's the thing is when i first when i first booted it up and i saw the menus and i got put into the tutorial area and the game was like all right turn around and pick and like look at the instructions behind you and i was like turn around <laughs> and i like and the whole tutorial kind of takes place on a wall behind you that you had to read and it was like okay you you're gonna laser a thing to your hand and then you're gonna look forward and then you're gonna drop it down and i'm like all right and i did that and i was like okay that's a weird thing and essentially what this game is what i learned through this tutorial and from playing the game is that you this game takes place in a world where there are giant zombie monster things sure zombies are huge right now. yeah zombie zombies are huge literally (laughs) and you're at the top floor of a building and these huge monsters are climbing to the top of the building and what you have to do is you have to turn around laser random objects into your hand and then throw them down at the at the monsters to get them to fall off right and like if they if the monsters crawl into the room you're in that's how you lose and so the game is it's a it's a pretty simple concept and overall it's a pretty simple game but i it's just a lot of fun um the the creativity they 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 have in terms of figuring out like what objects you can laser to you ha- your hand in the room you have inside it. like so i the first the first room i start off is started off in was like a i believe it was like a bedroom of a dude right and the dude's still there and so i'm like lasering a um like a baseball bat that he has in his room i laser it to my hand look down and i like throw it down at a zombie to knock them off um i you can i there are like books and stuff that i can that i can grab onto desks drawers all this stuff yeah, it's yeah. almost like a reverse katamari damasi where sure, like sure. <laughs> there's just like a bunch of different items placed all around the room that i could pick up and then like throw away um and as i'm doing this each time the guy who's standing there whose room i'm in he's like no please no like with, every, <laughs> with each object that i pull that i pull and throw down so that's fun uh there are a lot of gags and so like the the um that same level that guy has like a some kind of like nintendo system and so you can pull cartridges to to throw nice. at zombies and each cartridge has like a fun gag for a game so like one of them had like half-life 3 and then another had minecraft and then um i guess another one did have throw anything but you know it has fun stuff meta. like that I, I got very meta um the as far as like critiques on it be turning around in psvr isn't the best thing sure right because you lose tracking since the tracking is taking place in front of you yeah and so you know, it's got to see the lights on the back. Of it's got to see. It yeah. has to see the lights on the PS Move controllers, and so turning around and trying to grab things behind you, it's very, very a very risky, <laughs> risky thing to uh, to try out for PSVR. It works somewhat. Okay. Definitely could work way better. <laughs> okay. Um, and I assume this game is on other platforms and probably came from other platforms, which is why it was designed this way. Because I imagine this game probably works way better on some other PS, uh, some other VR platform. Um. So there's that uh a game can get pretty clunky at times like it is, it's a very simple game as far as like how it looks and how it feels to play um but it's definitely like definitely has like a base level of fun that made it worth trying out and okay. checking out and so it has fun music too um, how long did you see it all the way through did no you think, okay, okay no i did i played a few levels and uh, that's another thing too like a few levels in i was like i get it like yeah, it didn't yeah, seem yeah. like they're adding like a crazy amount of variety for what was going on there. Um, oh, also like th- throwing things doesn't necessarily have the best control. Like it feels like the physics does it. It's hard to get a feel for physics in VR when sure. you can't feel the thing that you're sure, throwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like you can go into like a practice room where they have a basketball hoop and you can pick up a basketball and throw the basketball to get a feel for how things work. And like as far as overhand throwing things in VR does not feel great. As far as like the underhand, you can kind of get it. To work with the basketball thing thankfully a lot of the a lot a lot of what's happening here in this game within the actual levels is more dropping than actual throwing um you do find yourself throwing a little bit if the zombies are off to the side but overall you're you're dropping so it's not a big issue but yeah the actual throwing stuff can feel 
off at times. Okay. Overall, fun game, though. Okay. Interesting. Uh, mine, Zombie Army 4, Dead War. You got into the zombie army with me. I and we did. went and killed some of Hitler's worst of we, the worst. We did. You, me, Richie, and then... Uh... It, was us, it was just us three. Oh, yeah. Right. Gary dropped out. I was like, I knew it was somebody. Yeah. Gary would have too, got all Hollywood on us. Couldn't do it or whatever. Um, the easiest way to describe Zombie Army Four is that it is uh, it's Left 4 Dead. It's uh, a, yeah. it's it's first person Left 4 Dead, right? Like, or no, is it? I, I remember aiming down sights being first person through my scope. Is the whole I think game it's third person? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Hold on, I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a <laughs> Zombie Army Left 4 Dead. Where yeah, it's I guess at the end of Zombie Army Three, they killed the reanimated Hitler, and they thought that would end everything, but no. it didn't. Now there's still just hordes of undead Nazis everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, apparently Hitler. Got, somehow got into a different dimension. Yeah, they said that, but we didn't really in. see that in what we were at. You know what yeah. I mean? Where we were at with our game. I think this is probably whatever. previous games in which when in, in where he somehow traveled to a different dimension and ruled zombies. No, I, well, he was no, no, he was he, he was ruling the zombies in our dimension for sure. Oh, was it in our dimension? Oh yeah, 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 this is our world that he was fucking with. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then it was yeah, it was, it was it was it was then we sent him or killed him in another again. We didn't play Zombie Army three. Yeah, technically we shouldn't be able to review this because we didn't play the whole series or whatever. Yeah. Fair. So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it's weird because it's this military deal, but then it is trying to be Left for Dead with like the campaigns where it is like you're doing setting off on like they have like the nice posters. You remember Left for Dead, right? Where it was like the I didn't play much Left. Oh Dead. no, shit, really? Yeah, it's the same way where they give them like you know campy little movie titles or whatever for mm-hmm. what you're going in on. But it is one extended long campaign. We did the first movie part of the campaign, then started the second one. Got really deep into it. Uh, all of us died and wiped, and it yeah. didn't checkpoint us. It sent us all the way, all back, way back to the back beginning, to the and we we're like, all right, we're we're good. Yeah, that's um, the worst, but. Aside from that, like I had a pretty fun time with it. Yeah, like, he's definitely like not like wasn't the most noteworthy of you know. I well, remember we looked but... it up last week. And I just gave it a seven. Yeah, and I'm like, yep, yep, yeah, yep. Like, that, so that is what like, this is. That like, sounds about right. Do you and your friends want to run around and shoot some zombies? And it's like, if you were to, if you would have pitched me, it's like, all right, it's it's uh, Left for Dead with like, but it's Hitler zombies. So, like, what do you think that looks like? And I'd be like, oh, this and like, there's gonna be like. You know, crawly zombies and exploding yeah. zombie. Like, yep, yep, yep. They, they they use guns too. There's zombie snipers. They're yeah. teleporting around. There's zombie machines. Which that guns. was pretty fun. Actually. Yeah, yeah. There's like the zombie flamethrower dudes. There's collectibles. There's upgrades. There's yeah. you know, you're you're earning all the stuff, and then you, in between missions, changing out your equipment. You're picking up uh, on on the fly attachments that like make your bolts electrified, and you able to connect all that stuff. And there's the teamwork stuff of you know, our, we are on, we are in Venice in our second campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going and the boat breaks down, so you gotta go get gas. And when you pick up the gas, you can only use your pistol. Like yeah. it's like a greatest hits of other multiplayer shooters you've done before. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, all right. Yeah, yeah it's like you know, the, you and I had the same thought and you said it before I could when we were playing it. it was just like kind of makes me want to go play World War Z. Yeah, no, yeah. I was, yeah, I was like, is World War Z on P- in PS4? Do you want to play World War Z? Like I I it gave me that itch, you know, yeah. which is actually a great thing. And it's yeah. like definitely like once we got into it, at, at, at the start, I was like, oof, this might, this might be rough. Right, because we started it, and it's like, even though you're playing on PlayStation, it's set to, like, PC sensitivity. Yeah, like, I look at my so settings, like, <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, like, here, yeah, the, 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 the sensitivity was horrible, but then I looked in the settings, and they were like, it was, like, mouse settings and stuff, and I'm like, I'm on PS4. Why am I seeing yeah, 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 settings yeah. for mouse? Um, and then, like, we get into the game, and immediately, uh, Richie, like, glitches out on the, on the thing. Yeah, yeah, and Richie like, got stuck in something we had to run ahead. Or... Yeah, and we had to, like, run ahead and see, like, if he'll spawn back at the next thing. And so, like, it was a rough start, but once we got into it, I was like, oh, this game's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good time. It's, yeah, I don't, it, it, it doesn't have that polish. You know, I mean, there's a reason we don't do the AAA games, right? We're trying to talk, play stuff that I think we normally wouldn't. Yeah. It doesn't have that polish to it. But again, yeah, there's a fun time there for sure. Yeah. I could definitely see playing with other people. I like the different kinds of to- kinds of zombies. Like, e- as, like, stereotypical and predictable they are, as yeah. they are, like, I did, like, the the sniper zombie te- teleporting around along yeah. with, like, the um, zombies zombies with uh, bombs strapped to them yeah, running at you. Suiciders or whatever. Suiciders, yeah. 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 Um, and like as somebody who didn't play a crazy amount of Left 4 Dead, like I played Left 4 Dead maybe once or twice at a friend's place, but as somebody who didn't crazy like person. get into Left 4 Dead like that, you know, it seemed like a fun one of those. Yeah. And it was, I mean, you know, before getting to choose your own loadout, go in, like, you know, I was sticking with the machine gun. I felt good. I thought all the gun- guns felt good. I'm not usually one who wants to snipe, but like, you know, you similar to how like you have the pistol every time you do have a, a rifle every time yeah and like going through customizing those picking the one i wanted like it felt good i enjoyed that yeah. getting headshots was easy and stuff 
It was yeah. fun, but yeah, it's like it was definitely that thing of like as soon as it reset us, I was like, all right, I'm done. Like, oh, I was yeah. like, you want to do a horde mode? We did a horde mode. And I was like, all right, yeah, cool. See everybody later. And I'm never gonna play it again. I definitely want to try World War Z now. Like that's my that's my takeaway from this game is that I want to play World War Z. World War Z was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. So it's time to rank them. So it sounds like these are both positive ones. Yes. So we're in the top. So again, number one, Darwin Project. Number two, Foxy Land Two. Number three, it came from space and ate our brains. Number four, Earth Knight. Number five, Graveyard Keeper. I'm who's who's going first? Me and you. You go first. Where do you want to put? Throw anything. Oh man, I'm debating, f- and this is like a this is a battle I have to have myself because sure, I sure. don't know whether or not I want to put it above or below Earth Knight. Gotcha. Because Earth Knight seems like a more fleshed out game. As far as like what they're doing there mechanically, like it, Earth Knight, I feel like takes certain risks that seem interesting for it mm, mm. as a platforming game and a roguelite, and like the art style of Earth Knight, I really dug. But throw any like if somebody was like, okay, you can go back to one of these games now, like after it's all said and done, um, throw anything would probably be the one that I go Ooh. back to easily because I I like like it's basic but it's fun. Like the concept there works and there's enough like quirk and heart there where i was like all right this this is entertaining i kind of i kind of dig this even though earth knight seems a bit like there's a bit more there as far as like complexity and so i guess with that i gotta put it above earth knight yeah yeah okay and so i'm gonna put it above earth knight below it came from space and the other raids all right cool i'm putting in there throw anything currently at number four but we have to figure out where we're putting zombie army for dead war and See, I, I, I'm with myself here, too. Mm-hmm. I, for me, it's is it above or below Foxy Land 2? And it's interesting, since you've played it, you can. It, I, I'm keeping Darwin Project out of the conversation, right? Yeah. Because you actually feel like you're going to go back to Darwin Project, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, like, that, I feel like then right there is where we get into it. I feel like there's two schools of thoughts on it, right? Mm-hmm. Zombie Land, or Foxy Land 2, a game, again, a cheap platinum, it turns out. Remember, I wasn't originally going to pick it. I did, and then it turned out it was just a, a, a Mario knockoff, and it was fun and challenging and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd probably play Zombie Army 4 before I'd play Foxy Land 2 again, but I think Foxy Land 2 is the better game. Does that make sense? No, I feel I, like I I'd have that. more fun to go back to Zombie Land with fr- or, uh, the Zombie Army 4 with friends. Foxy Land 2, it's like, I got it. It's, it's more Mario and stuff. Like, I platinumed it already. What's left for me? I guess I got to say it's above it then, right? Yeah. That seems like the It sounds rules. like Foxy Land. All right, cool. Wait, it sounds like Foxy Land? <laughs> Yeah. Fox, we agree Foxy Land yeah, above Foxy Zombie? Land. All right, yeah. cool. All right, cool. Then Darwin Project, Foxy Land 2, Zombie Army 4. It came from Space Night, Our Brains. And number five, throw anything. You, anything can happen here. You know what I mean? On 101 or 4, what is 104 <laughs> PSN games ranked? Anything can happen. There you go. 104. Did I say 1,000 before? <laughs> you did earlier, I think. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, it's time to pick next week's things we're playing all right uh we are of course over on the playstation blog where our friend justin has written up what's coming uh this week to the playstation uh network uh, right now we have the adventures of double o dilly on playstation 4 Whoa. the ultimate crash test dummy comes to life help dilly show off his skills while shooting him across the grand canyon with strange devices collect points find treasure and soar upward to the highest scores with dilly oh, that pretty fun. ao tennis 2 on playstation 4 just, it's ten. AO Tennis Two is the ultimate, the only tennis experience designed for and by its community. What? Create your own players, stadiums, and legendary matches. Uh, Azure Lane Crosswave. Wait, wait, wait. Designed for and by its community. What does that mean? It's you designed. Create your own. It's kind of like dreams, I guess. They're making their own matches. tennis players. Dreams shit. tennis. Yeah. Azure Lane Crosswave PlayStation Four. Uh, in the middle of. Each nation's normal training routine, a joint military exercise was enacted. A few, s- select few from each nation were chosen to participate in this righteous, no, rigorous event. But how did this event come to be? Are there other ulterior motives at play? No. What the fuck is this game? Uh, Darksiders Genesis on PlayStation 4. Uh, Darksiders Genesis, of course, came to Stadia, and I loved it at uh, Judges Week. I think hey. this is disqualified. Yeah. Uh, Dreams, of course, on it needs no introduction. Disqualified. We're gonna play it and we like it a lot. Glass Masquerade Two Illusions on PlayStation oh, Four. God. Jesus Christ. Glass Mas- Sh- Oh yeah, they can't see. It. I was gonna tell. Glass Masquerade Two Illusions is a dreamlike collection of artistic jigsaw puzzles to piece together at your own relaxed pace. Dive into the rabbit hole of the abstract and fantastical, putting together stained glass fragments to solve dreams and riddles. Enjoy, Barkow. Bar- Baroque. Baroque, thank you. Uh, depictions of 20, uh, 20th century imagination in puzzles more intricate and complex than the original. And it's, it looks like fucking Pennywise in the clown. It does. Like that one. It's terrifying. 
Hidden on PlayStation 4. Uh, trapped in a mental asylum for the criminally insane. The only way to survive is to find the three keys to escape without being killed by the other inmates. You have a flashlight, but turning it on at the wrong time will attract the other inmates. So use it wisely. Uh, will you get out and tell your story, or will you become one of them? This week is not looking great so far. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> Mosaic on PS4. You live in a monotonous and repetitive lonely life in a cold, overpopulated, ever-expanding city, oh, moving through anonymous crowds on your way to another long day at the mega corporation. Relatable. What? You have no real <laughs> sense of meaning until one crucial day when strange things start to happen on your commute to work, and everything changes. Uh, Pawa Rum- Rummy. Pawa Rummy, right? It's, it's been a uh, Vita. Uh, Pawa Pawa Rummy? Oh, no, this one's yeah. Switch before. I know I've talked about it before. Uh, Rock, paper, scissors with lasers. Uh, avenge the people of Earth in this exciting Neo Aztec shoot 'em up. Uh, Pawa Rummy is a modern shoot 'em up set in retro futuristic spa- sci fi pre Columbian universe. <laughs> Take what? control of the almighty ship <laughs> Kukaru and its unique, three unique weapons. I would say Shukaru. You know what? You're not hosting the show, so nobody gives a shit what you say. All right? <laughs> Project Starship on PS4. Take the role of Garrett or Gwen. Gwen is the one showing her ass, of course, in the photo. Uh, pilots charge. I put that in. That's not in the description. Uh, charge with saving the world from an ancient evil. Evade, adapt, and survive randomly generated challenges that are never the same twice. Take down gods and demons alike in unpredictable bullet hell. Shoot them up action and dive deeper to confront the hidden eye that watches over all. Read remastered on PlayStation Vita and PS4. It lives. Long ago, in a beautiful and mysterious world, an old supercomputer created the digital world that is now breaking down. In a final effort to stop the impending end of the virtual space, a small creature named Reed was created to save the world. The virtual world now depends entirely on you and your platforming skills. Saboteur 2, Avenging Angel. Saboteur 2, Avenging Angel is the second part of the classic retro game. You like that? How, would you have guessed that Sabotar Part Two is is the or Sabotar Two is the <laughs> second part? Uh, Clive Townsend in 1985 for the ZX Spectrum 8-bit computer. Uh, in the game, experience the original mission from the 1987 version and continue with new levels and enemies. Learn more about the sister of Saboteur and her dark and secret mission. Space Land on PlayStation 4, a turn-based strategy that revives the traditions of old-school sci-fi tactics. Uh, less covers, more action. Land on a lost planet and show the mutants what you are made of. Shoot, kick, blow up, and destroy. Assemble the most reckless team of fighters and unravel the mysteries of the mystical planet. Then Under Hero on PlayStation 4. <laughs> Under Hero is an RPG platformer where the chosen hero has failed and an underling of the, king, or the evil king reluctantly takes his place as the new hero. Use timing-based combat to defeat enemies as you venture across the land, face off against quirky bosses, and save the chestnut kingdom from your own evil boss, Mr. Stitches. And then finally, of course, or no, damn, there's more. The Unicorn Princess on PlayStation 4. Explore the world on horseback and help the inhabitants of your village. Befriend Unica, the unicorn, while exploring the real world and use and, you, and the world of dreams. From your village, the dream world is just a step away. You're the only one who can help Unica save her world. This is, if you are an audio listener, Dude. you owe it to yourself to jump to this part of the podcast and look at the cover art for this one. It's, what do you got to play this? Come on. Yaku- Yakuza 3 Remastered and Yakuza 5 really Remastered out this week. Yakuza needs no, uh, no uh, introduction, and those are great games, and you should play them. Now, Bless, oh. we, we introduced earlier uh, in the show here of PS I Love You XOXO other episodes that people mm-hmm. are allowed to help us. Once again, Nathan Choquette, a.k.a. at Indy Ronin, wrote in to uh, patreon.com slash games and says, Hey, guys, just wanted to write in with more recommendations for the 104 PSN games ranked list. Uh, Glad. Is there a G there? Yeah, it's 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 on the previous Oh, yeah. glad that Greg decided to play Zombie Army 4 even without seeing my recommendation from last week. So hopefully I can help him out three weeks in a row. This week, the first possible banger that I'd like to su- suggest is called Underhero, where you take control of a minion uh, to the Ingle- evil king who has chosen me. We just saw it. It has a quirky, colorful look to it and almost seems a little reminiscent of the Paper Mario series in terms of its overall feel. Just a faint bit in my opinion. Thank you, Indy Ronan. Uh, the next one is Mosaic, which follows the story of an office worker whose monotonous life changes with a mysterious incident. The game gives off uh, the game gives off vibes similar to the game Inside by Playdead, and appears to be more focused on telling story about living in a dystopian world rather than just solving puzzles. Also, for Greg, make sure to avoid Read Remastered, seeing as, that, <laughs> seeing as it is a Rattalika game, oh. published title, and will have two easy platforms. Whoa. Uh, Nathan, it'll probably have three, so don't worry about it. If I wanted to get to the Asia servers, and it's got the Vita one, yeah, so I'm all set. Under Hero was the one I was looking at. Yeah? Yeah. Like then I, I, I was looking at Mosaic, so oh, I think wow. it's easy. Then we don't have to argue. Yeah. yeah I'm glad. We don't. All right, then I'm going to yeah. do Mosaic. Let's do it. 
You're doing Under Hero. Under Hero. See, I, I was into the description of Under Hero mm -hmm. until they mentioned... Uh, the Chestnut King. No, no, no. <laughs> Use timing-based combat. I see. That's the thing and that like, gave me pause, I'm too. Just, I got no timing, so I don't know how that would work for me. Okay. I'm a dumb-dumb. You know what I mean? It would work poorly for you. It would work poorly for me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now let me tell you about our sponsors. It's patreon.com slash kind of funny games. If you like what we do, Whoa. go there. You can ask us questions. You can be part of the show. You can get the show ad free. You can get it with the big old post show we put on the end. Sometimes it's not that big. You know how it is. Just, it's there. It's a post show. There's a post show for it. Also keeps the mics on, mics on and the lights on. So thank you. We love you. Support us. Barry, don't roll your eyes at me, all right? But I'm talking all day long here. You know what I mean? Nick didn't even come to work today. I know. A bum. Now oh. that it's him. Wow. Well. Well, Tim well, doesn't Tim's have eyeballs. Blind. They're rebuilding his eyes. That's yeah. different. Uh, Nick just what? He had a cocktail last night and watched the Oscars. He's like, oh, I'm tired. Yeah. Oh. It's really hard to make the studio. It's really hard to make fun of Barrett for hours. Did he make fun of you last night? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He Both him and Kevin were giving me a lot of shit last night. Because you, like, you, you went for a movie. You predicted a movie to win Best Picture that you hadn't seen. Yeah. Which one did you predict? Again, I was nineteen seventy. I, I predicted Ford versus Ferrari because again, yeah. I was thinking about who the voters are. Yeah. I was playing the numbers, and you know what, Greg? I fucking won the most best, uh, the most predictions. You're right. So, so I who's played the number. Now? I he's played right. the numbers. Eric Courtney's game. laughing. Everybody. Persona yep. Scramble coming soon. Persona Scramble. Five right months. Who's there? Said writes in to patreoncom slash games and says, "Where is the dreams marketing? To me, it really looks like it's non-existence beside Media Molecule retweeting user creations. As far as I can see, there are no TV ads and very few social media posts. How does Sony expect to have dreams go on for 10 years if no one buys it? Bless Daddy. Yes. How do you feel? I don't know how you. How I, I feel like how now. you're just like yes. <laughs> uh, how do you? Where, where? What do you feel right now? We of course had Media Molecule here, mm -hmm. in which I asked about this. I asked them point blank. Do you feel like Sony supporting you? Yeah. And of course, I said before I did it. I know this is a stupid question because you're not. You would never say live on camera. No, you don't feel like they are. But they did say right, and I do believe uh, uh, Siobhan right when she talks and says no. Herman and the team and PlayStation is giving us what we need. Mm -hmm. What I, I, we talked about it there of how hard it is to market this game. Do you think PlayStation is doing it the right way at the moment? I mean, the, by the right way, do you mean like not marketing it? Yeah, really at all? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would think that some efforts better than no effort, but at the same time, like they're in a interesting situation of trying to market a game that feels like. There's no really concrete way to explain it. Yeah. You know, like if I were if if I were in their shoes and I had to market it, I think like the thing that you would push is the fact that like it's a game that can be whatever you want it to be, right? Like you can go for the route of being like of like showing a bunch of different games and then like zooming out and being like, Oh, this is made in dreams. Like they could put those commercials out there. But I feel like part of the way that dreams is gonna speak to, to people is by one actually like having like getting their hands on it like that's going to be a, a big thing and word of mouth you know which feels weird to say about like a first party sony game like for the most part first party sony games you tend to associate with like a a ramp up you know like i look at god of war and i can see i can see those ads for youtube yeah. videos right oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. same thing for you know last was two and you like even like Ratchet and Clank, or like what, like whatever random yeah, first yeah, party yeah. games you want to bring to the table. Um, and so, I feel like I feel like it's hard with dreams. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? I think for once, I don't blame PlayStation marketing. <laughs> Where you, you know, I mean, how many times before we have been? Where is this commercial? Why aren't they doing this? Blah blah blah. As I said on the stream with Media Molecule, right. It's not a game you can show during an NBA game. And so, and have it make sense in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And so, for us to sit here and be like, oh man, you, it, some effort's better than nothing, right? You get out there and show the quick uh, shots of what the games are. Yeah, right? what they can be. I still feel like that is happening in our sector. Because it is mm -hmm. on the blog, it is on the Twitter, it is where you're seeing it, it is us talking about it, right? I want to introduce, you know, I'll, I'll do it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll put out the first official call uh, for a brand new segment here on PS I Love You XOXO called 
I dream of P-S-I-L-Y. I dream of P-S-I love you. Uh, Dreams is out, so we're going to do a community contest to see who can make the coolest creation. Uh, usually, we're gonna, I, I think as we do this and pilot it, every month we're going to do it, right? Every month we'll have a theme for what to do. Since this is month one, whatever you want to do. You just got dreams. You want to make something in dreams. Go ahead and make something in dreams. It doesn't have to be a game. Remember, of course, dreams is like a creation suite of you can make music, you can make levels, you can make movies, you can make pictures of uh, uh, food. food. So <laughs> like whatever you want it to be, make it and then submit it. W submit your in dreams me link. If you don't know what that is, go to in dreams me. Uh, it's a site that you will be awesome. It is awesome to use with dreams because you can have your laptop open or whatever your tablet open while you play dreams and favorite stuff, move things, play levels, search really easily with your pad. Anyways, uh, submit your in dreams uh, dot me link to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, on the listener mail sheet and we will go through those play through those and then once a month pick our favorite one like i said we'll give usually a theme but get out there and get crazy with it right i think dreams now that it's out and i'm saying that before it's actually out but it'll mm. be out by the time you listen to this it's going to be proof in the pudding this first week of it of our other podcasts our ign editors our GameSpot people our youtubers twitchers jumping in and using it playing it finding cool stuff you know what i mean it, in the same way we talked about it with media molecule of how cool it is that they have that twitch extension now where when you're watching someone play a dreams level if you have the twitch extension install installed you can click to add it to your dreams queue and do all that and and have it functionality there with your own profile of dreams so you're sharing it all together and if this really is a living, breathing platform. If it really is growing, if it really is going to be that, so many people that were like me bought early access and never created anything, but tonight, tomorrow, are going to turn it on and jump in and find thousands of amazing creations and then get inspired to make stuff or go stuff or just play Media Molecules things. That's when the ball really gets rolling on it. And I think it's a chicken, egg, horse, and cart kind of conversation of I saw – I put up our – uh, let's play first impression on the dream subreddit and and I forget actually now if it was a dream subreddit or if it was no it was it was dream subreddit and someone commented on there like man it's kind of crazy there's no reviews for this right like usually mm. Sony first party games have a review and I responded to it I'm just like well no right because like this isn't a normal first party game this this would be like reviewing the division two but not having it online yet and yeah. out to the public like this is a thing that needs to be released to everyone and for you to really be able to wrap your heads around in the way that early access is working the way that if you already had early access creator stuff now they're flipping a switch and it becomes the full game there's no way to flip the switch just for reviewers to get in it's got to be everybody it's got to be all mm -hmm. or nothing and so in the same breath i feel like if dreams is what people want or what media molecule wants it to be and what playstation wants it to be and what we hope it is right that should get it tumbling down the hill on its own. You should hopefully see beyond doing similar things and uh, IGN and GameStop writing up articles of cool creations and hopefully fans going that way to the point that now is where it gets way out on a limb that they wouldn't do it. But what I would want to see, that is PlayStation starts promoting the fact that, like you're talking about, I don't know how long after the fact of like, here's all the cool things that have happened in dreams and why don't you go play unlimited games yeah. or whatever. And that's the thing is like, I, I, I can see it being a thing where they're like, let's skip the first wave of marketing, you know, because the thing that's going to like the, we can have the first conversation about this game be with the people that are actually getting their hands on it and getting in there and creating things. Right. And yeah. then a month or a few in, we then start, actually showing you what dreams is and what people are making and, you know, make those the commercials, make it so that we can actually take things that people, people have been making um, and putting those in and actually like illustrating what this game has been up to this point. And when, and when I, have, here's my thing. I, I clearly love dreams and the idea. I clearly love media molecule. Mm -hmm. I have no false pretenses. I do. I think that this is going to be bigger than little big planet. No, that is going to hit like little big planet did. And even Little Big Planet didn't hit huge, right? But it hit big, mm -hmm. and I and it was that Sackboy was marketable, and people wanted to buy toys and all that jazz, right? Yeah. I still think that there's a great chance here that Media Molecule could do something with Dreams that isn't well. I, I would say honestly is unheard of, where they already have such a dedicated community, they already have such a fervent fan base that I really do think if Media Molecule has the wiggle room, which I do believe they do, that they were able to make their own awards show, right? I really do 
what what does happen when I you know from the stream we did we did right? What does happen when I land Troy Baker and get him in Pig Detective, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that'll get written up on Kotaku and all stuff. Like, oh my God, Troy Baker is putting his voice into this thing. If Troy does it, you know what I mean? Yeah, obviously. But then what happens when Media Molecule is like, cool, we're excited to announce that Tim Schafer's making a game in Dreams, right? Or working with us or whatever. And hey, Warren Spector is doing something in here, and Will Wright is doing and. There's enough things there, and I know how hard that is, and I know how difficult that is, That I, but I could see them do. I really, really could see them do it, go out there, find these people, bring them in that way, and then you have this groundswell where, hey, community, make a trailer for this. Make a trailer promoting the fact that all these cool people are in there, right? Like, mm -hmm. we want to see what you would do for Tim's game, because it is this whole collaborative effort, so what if it was, like... The game's out there and you can play it, but how would you... You can get to all the assets. You can use all the stuff. How would you guys remix the trailer for it? How? Would, what kind of flyers would you make? Is mm. and it like... It almost becomes like a street team, if you remember. And I know you're way too young for this. But if you remember when bands were happened, right? And it would be that you'd go share that everywhere. If it is everybody making their own trailers, flyers, whatever, screenshots, and putting it out that way and sharing those links and doing that thing, like... There's something so intoxicating about Dreams. Mm -hmm. It is literally unlimited potential and i just don't know if media molecule will harness it in the right way to make it go even bigger if that makes sense because i don't i feel like i'm yeah in one I, in one hand i keep saying like it's it's amazing on the yeah, other hand i'm like it's, it's not like, gonna go anywhere yeah, it can't go to it. yeah it, it's 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 a difficult thing because i think like for all the things that you're saying right as far as like oh yeah like let's see about getting troy in a, as a voice in one of these yeah, games yeah. right or let's see about like even the idea of getting um, like Mitch Dyer writing a, 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 a game or, you know, like having yeah. like different people who have, who have these different talents in the industry coming through and creating things for dreams, right? That doesn't necessarily translate to a mainstream audience, but then, yeah. that, that then begs the question of like, it, will dreams ever translate to a mainstream audience? No. And I think that's, I think it's a bummer that they don't even try. Like, I, and, I, and, and I think that, that that's kind of where I come down when I look at, the lack of the lack of marketing for dreams, right? The lack of even seeing like YouTube pre roll ads or like any sort of ad um, <clears throat> for it, but then also seeing that like uh, like the idea that they then gain exposure and gain um, a user base through like almost like viral marketing, right? Getting yeah. people on Twitter like to post their dreams, but like, you know the the whole the whole moments of having people recreate PT. Right and like the moments that the moments that were happening uh, at the beginning of the creators early access thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like those were awesome. Right. And those went viral within our sphere. But is that like the best we can really hope for for dreams? Because I think I, th I think when we look at it through that lens, yes, dreams will be successful within our sphere. Dreams yeah. will be cool and dreams will have that word of mouth within our sphere. But you know trying to break out of that is going to be such a challenge and I 100%. don't know if they can do it without like that effort coming from Sony. I'm totally with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to take away from that at all. You, you know, and I just don't know, again, chicken or egg thing. Yeah. Is it worth right now running a pre-roll for this thing and being like, there's a bunch of somewhat complete games yeah. out there and we're releasing the guy, the musician dude story. That's a thing that's happening. Or is it like, I, I don't even know. And I think you gotta be like, you might have to be clever with it. Cause I could see, I could see a commercial being like, you know, not necessarily marketing dreams as a game, but marketing it as a creative application mm -hmm. and having it mm -hmm. having it be like a like a thing of like here's your um, like your upbeat music and a guy like running into his room after a day of work and he's like he spends his work as like an engineer right and he's creating technology for like whatever technology company comes home and he's like great now I can start on my actual thing and yeah he's, like, my dream and, yeah, right? yeah start yeah. on my dream right like that could be like a whole whole thing they go about and try to and they they could try to go about it in the way of like oh no let's let's go big like let's try to market this like apple would market like a new big app that they're working on because yeah. like dreams has the smell of that like dreams has the 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 spirit of something that is like oh no this is like a powerful tool that creators can use yeah. right it also has like the the quirkiness in the heart of something that is media molecule you know, and it is a thing that's on PlayStation, which is which makes it a weird amalgamation of things. But at the end, like at the very core of it, it's something that is cool and it's something that I think works, right? From what I played in the Creators Early Access and what we've seen on Twitter and what we've seen 
people put out and what we saw on the stream, right? Like on the stream alone, we saw creations there that Dude, made me go like that's sci-fi shit. shit you were yeah, playing. the last one that we closed the stream with. Yeah, like, where the walls are fading away and you're moving yeah. through. I was like, this is insanely good. Yeah, looking like it looks like you know. I don't know if you. I've talked about anti chamber before. I think on this show or, or on a different show, but like it looked kind of like that, where it's like, oh yeah, there's like this cool minimalist sci-fi puzzle game first person and somebody made this in dreams and it works super well like people like the fact that people can do that in this game i feel like there's something there that that they can take and they can make translate to a mainstream audience if they if they communicate it the right way but it's one of those things where i don't know if they're not communicating it because they don't believe it or because they don't believe they can i i think it'd be worth trying though that's kind of where I'm, where I land. Here's my p- pitch. You, you ready? Yeah. So, let's get dreams out as it is now. Let's get everybody in there creating. Let's, you, as you've already talked about, like on the on the uh, let's play the first impressions, right? Uh, what you saw over the weeks of in months mm-hmm. of early access, we're like, all oh, right, this is good. Holy shit, this is cool. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like you know what I mean? Let it domino effect and grow as the snowball rolls down the hill. Mm-hmm. Let's give dreams. I'd say three to six months in in just out there, right? Yeah. And then the trailer you drop is Dreams is thousands of games. It's thousands of artworks. It's thousands of music tracks. You're showing all this shit. You know, you're flying, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. I imagine someone, if not, you know, I can't do it. I'm not telling them. Someone, uh, there's already the curator stuff built inside of Dreams, but like someone should make Metacritic in Dreams for Dreams mm-hmm. where people are somehow importing uh, their own sc- yeah. rating systems and scoring everything. You can see it. But. Let it go either three months or six months till it's built up this huge, vast library. Put out that trailer and like it, it's thousands of this, it's thousands of that, it's this, that, the other. Mm-hmm. It's PlayStation Plus, and then you drop it on PlayStation That'd Plus, be dope. right? And then that, because yeah. that's what you're talking about of like that is your best bet to getting it as mainstream as possible. Where if it is. You already have these people who have been in early access for a year. Now you have the early access in quotes people who actually paid for it, bought it, like what three months to six months in. You've sold as much as you're gonna get off the launch bump of dreams. Now they've all created, now they've all done it. Try to maybe even pair it with, you know, they were talking about like their uh, the, for uh, Media Molecule, they've already moved on to what else is coming to dreams, right? With the next the additions and things they're gonna do. Is there gonna be a paid DLC? If there is, time it with that. Where Dreams is PlayStation Plus, starting on what it be? Uh, let's if it's seven months, so uh, July, right? Mm. July, here it is. We're dropping it. Uh, it's coming out. It's timed with expansion pass one, if that's even a thing, whatever. Where you can, you're getting the game for free. You can buy the expansion if you want to, but you get all these people in for free who walk in and go, "Holy shit!" There are thousands of awesome games and creations, and even if I don't want to. Uh, even if I don't want to build stuff, there's all this stuff for me to play, and it is unlimited content, and it is all these things. You get them in that way and have it yeah. for a month, and then they're making stuff, and you're doing stuff, and you're selling more after that. Yeah. Try to Rocket League it a bit. I could very well see it being like, as far as the, the commercial or advertisement aspect of it, I could see them doing like two different commercials, right? Where it's one for one for the creators and one for the, for the players, right? Where it yeah. is like, you know, half of it. Because I feel like that's an underrated aspect of dreams of it being for different types of people yeah right and like so what for what i was saying before with like the like the engineer coming home and creating a thing or like an artist coming home and sculpting their art in dreams right like i feel like you could still put that out i feel like that's something that you wouldn't even put out before dreams comes out right I'm, 100%. I'm, I'm thinking about the question here of like um oh, i lost it uh, where is where like where is where where are the advertisements like the marketing is non-existent all that stuff right? I could see them waiting for dreams to come out right, waiting for the fourteenth or waiting for the a week or two into dreams before they start advertising to creators because dreams is kind of a weird thing to try and build hype for. Like it's really it's really hard to get somebody excited for like the day one drop of dreams when it's so ethereal and so like amorphous right when it's like a thing that you can't really nail down you don't know what that first day response is going to be like and so why would you try and ramp up hype for something that is so weird but i can see like the week of when people can actually like go to the store directly and get their hands on it i can see and that's the other i I mean that's another great point of like again for what dreams is and marketing in general not that pre-orders don't matter but like again the last of us part two is such an easier sell in a trailer for two minutes than dreams is right yeah it it is that idea that dreams for a lot of people is going to be that impulse buy 
How many yeah. how many people in the comments of our uh, first impressions, let alone the chat, were like, you guys just sold me on this game? It's like, I'm sure Media Maka loves to hear that and see that. I'm sure they would much prefer it to be like, I just bought this game watching you play this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I went out and did that right there in the moment and got it because I needed to play that or I wanted to start putting stuff down. Or Again, you can use indreams.me right now without owning dreams. You can start building out your library of what you want to play when you eventually get the game. Mm -hmm. Like that's the preferred method rather than like a oh yeah I'm gonna buy this one day because of you yeah or am I gonna wait for PlayStation Plus and like me playing armchair marketer or armchair <laughs> advertiser yeah. right like the first I would have that first wave of advertisements be like you know this is what you can create in dreams and then like what you're talking about right as far as like few months down the line right six months down the line right like here they start marketing it to like the creators and the players and drop it on PS Plus and make that a, a huge boom yeah like, I think there are options for dreams to then to then make it a big deal. But I hope I hope they try is my big thing is that and, and right now I'm not com I'm not confident that Sony is trying hard enough with dreams. And that's and I'm with you mm -hmm. where it is as usual. I think I always talk in best case scenarios, right? Of like, well, why would you mark? I'm sure Media Market would love to fucking be on billboards and in Times Square and all this other stuff. I don't know if the, again it would work or make sense yeah. for them or whatever. But I hope that there's a plan there. I hope that it is that. I think the excitement that naturally comes to dreams from the creators and the audience is infectious enough to get people to go look into it and get it and remember that they had a good time in Little Big Planet, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, it's gonna be a really wild ride for this game finally coming out. A game that's been gest gestating for an yeah. entire generation. Are you gonna make anything? Yeah, oh yeah. Really? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna start small, I think, and put in like, I make was talking tree. to Jen. I was talking about. I, I'm so obsessed with trees, right? Yeah. I may, I'll probably have to make a tree now for sure because I've talked about it for years. But I think I was talking to Jen about it. Of like Saturday, I think I'd like to come home and just make boring VO, just That'd like stock fun, yeah. VO of like, hi, hey, what's up? Yeah, mm -hmm. and not even like Greg Miller VO. Just like I need, some, I need a character to say whatever while they wait and have a line to go find. Yeah, because that's where I think like, and not that I'm good at VO, but I mean like that's something I can do. Yeah. Whereas like. I was thinking about like yeah levels to make and like how to make fun of KFA if in it and stuff and I'm like that's a lot of work I don't know you yeah. know what I mean we'll see yeah I think I'm gonna go into it purely as a player yeah I don't think I'm gonna create anything well it's the thing too and then like I like the idea of being a curator like I have a feeling that like you know because that's you can get points for that like curating mm -hmm. a cool shit and like I feel like a lot of people obviously care about what we say about games so to go in and actually build that kind of list and stuff and yeah. have like recommendations I think that'd be hot. I might also see about making music because I, I like making music sometimes in my free time. Yeah. And I usually use like FL Studio or like some basic yeah. ass like type of uh, music software. And so knowing that that's in dreams, it could be fun to mess around with. with and so I might do that too. Okay. Uh, in lieu of us uh, doing the 2014 game of the decade thing, I want to get another question here. Is that okay with you, Bless? Uh, that's fine with me. Jamie S. writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, happy Monday, Greg and Blessing. I have a required reading for you if you're interested. Patrick Klepek over at Vice writes, Spider-Man developers want more people to know how games are written. And then, of course, links to vice.com where you can go too. Insomniac is releasing a book of the Spider-Man game script as a way to make the process of AAA game development more transparent, and I think this is such an awesome move. I was equally impressed with the God of War documentary last year and the honesty with which it seemed to portray that development process, not shying away from the more difficult moments. I'm sure you'll agree that the script being published is great to see, so my question is this. Why don't we see stuff like this from AAA developers more often? Game art books have become quite common, but why not more scripts or retrospectives on the development process? Is there just not enough time and resources to create this type of stuff, or am I an isolated weirdo and there isn't really an audience for it? Do you think Sony encourages their developers to do content like this, or do you think developers have the f have to fight for this level of transparency? And do most developers even want to be this transparent? Sorry for like 50 questions, so I appreciate whatever answers you're willing to give. Thank you both, Jamie S. Did you see this, number one, Bless? Uh, I saw floating around, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, it came out last week. It said it's going to be available in your local comic book shop. Mm -hmm. Walked right into the comic shop below us. So I'm like, did you get the Spider-Man script? They're like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> I was like, ah, this thing. They're like, no, we did not get that. I was like, all right, That's see you funny. later. And then I never picked it up. I forgot about it. Dang. But I'm 1,000% behind this. Yeah, I think this is awesome. It's an amazing idea because as I was thinking about it when I read about the fact that they were doing this, I'm like... Yeah, I've never, I've never looked through a video game script. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never, in all my time of like, interviewing would, or doing stuff. I wouldn't even stuff, know how that would look like. Yeah, exactly. I've never had someone toss it to me outside of like when I've done VO. But when I'm doing VO, it's 
you, always an Excel document, right? And yeah. telling you the various the the state my character's in, what I need to say. I have yeah. uh, I have to do some right now, and it's in my inbox, and that's literally what it is. It's just like you know, here's a little bit of context for what your character's doing. Here's what's happening. Yeah. And so like yeah, I really want to get my hands on this, and I really want to do it. And I think why aren't more? Well, you have a lot of questions here, as mm. you already said, Jamie, right? Why aren't more people doing this? I think it's a bold, crazy idea. Yeah, I think it's terrifying also. Yeah, exactly. Like, right? I, I, I think, like, audiences can be judgmental, right? I understand the idea of, like, oh, yeah, if we show, like, a certain thing, like, what if they get angry that they that we didn't include this uh, concept art or that we didn't include, like, this mechanic, even though we tried to implement that mechanic and it just ultimately broke our game. Like, I can see, I can see that being a lot of it. Um, but, I, I mean, I would like to see more stuff like this. And I think we are, I think we kind of are with, you know, stuff like no clip, you know, oh, yeah. like you, people who are documenting stuff like the God of War documentary, like we're seeing a bit of the process and we're seeing like cool inside looks at a lot of the development processes for a lot of developers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea of putting out your, your script, I think is really awesome. And really cool. And that's something that's, I think even less risky than putting out like, I don't know, man, like a whole, front to back like look into developing a game as far as like all the different things they try oh yeah, 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 they, yeah totally totally they even art book when you see stuff that got cut yeah right? yeah yeah and that's a new story about it and so yeah for the spider-man book right and the script being released why don't we see more of it because i don't think anybody's thought about it before there was a great tweet um from bill roseman at marvel games right February 7th when they were talking about this in the Vice article, actually. And there's a quote. Uh, we started talking about publishing the Spider-Man PS4 script as a book. Is that possible? And then Eric Monticelli from Marvel Games said, uh, that's never been done before. And I said, well, great. At Marvel, we love doing what hasn't been done, so let's try it. I think we are in such an interesting point in video games in the industry where we've gotten to this point that the audience, and not the entire audience, mm. but the audience understands the blood, sweat, and tears that went into this and want to know those stories. And so I think the God of War, uh, Corey documentary, right? Raising Kratos. I give Corey shit about it all the time, obviously, because I love him so much. But what an amazing breakthrough. And what an awesome move to make that and follow yeah. that, right? And in the same breath here, what an awesome move and breakthrough to do this for Spider-Man. And together... Of course, it makes sense for these games. These humongous AAA, millions of units moved. One is God of War. One is Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Like those are guaranteed. I would say return on investments of printing a book and doing it right. When you're talking and like if, even for God of War, for as long as they followed Corey making the documentary, as long as they, they followed Santa Monica making that documentary, that makes so much sense. When you branch off to a smaller game, and is there a market for that? You know what I mean? Like we yeah. we had. Um, we talked recently. Oh, hold on, I'm there. I'm almost there. Arcade is dead. We oh. like it a lot. <laughs> Rezo Gun. Yeah. Why am I blanking on this the studio Shoot. we just talked about that I love so much? Housemark. Housemark, yeah. I was hung up on Hell Divers, and I'm like, it's an H word, but it's not. Housemark. Housemark has a documentary out right now that you can buy off Amazon or wherever you want to, but it's on there, and it's about their inside their studio making games, right? Mm -hmm. And was that a return on investment for them? Like that hasn't garnered the headlines that God of War did. That hasn't, you know, become a must watch from people who have it. It's in my queue. I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah. It's that idea that that's how hard it is to get someone to look at your stuff. We're all, you know what I mean? Like it's so hard for us to get you to watch a free video for our podcast on YouTube. You know, you're, everybody is competing with everybody for time, let alone the fact that game fans want to play games. So mm -hmm. I want to get the Spider-Man book for sure and page through it and do all these different things with it. I want to know more about God of War, but as much as I want those two things, I don't want that for every game because I just wouldn't have the bandwidth to do it. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's such a you know why is this? Why aren't we seeing more of this? I think we aren't seeing more of it because number one, it's risky for ninety-nine percent of the games, mm -hmm. and number two, it is brand new territory where people want to see those kind of scripts and what does that actually move right? But yeah. again. How awesome is it that that is happening? That you finally are seeing that in the same way. I remember being a kid and loving Pulp Fiction and getting the you know Tarantino's uh, Pulp Fiction script that they were selling in bookstores and getting to look through it while I watched the movie and be like, oh my god, this is how they did it. And understanding filmmaking on a level I hadn't before. Same thing here for games now. Like that's incredible, yeah. and that's going to inspire the next generation of gamers and move it on that way. Yeah. And I hope there's more of them, right? In the same way, I hope there's more art books because art books help you know inspire the next environment designer.
yeah i'm with you I, and i and i agree this is pre- this is a pretty cool thing that they're putting out the script um and i think like you also have like dev diaries out there and stuff that you can yep. that you can look up you know i remember watching the one for hellblade where they're kind of talking about like their processes there and making that game and being like oh wow this is cool um there are a lot of resources out there where you can go and not necessarily scripts but places you can go to like see like the inside processes of of making certain games and so and i think we're gonna get more and more of that you know since like with access to like being able to put out you know whatever video or whatever kind of content you want on the internet like things being being more easy to do i think you're just going to see more and more people do this type of thing and that's the big thing about it too is that i think how many developers have we seen launch their own twitch page uh hey we built the studio they're trying to figure out what to do with that when i think that and a lot there's a lot don't get me wrong i'm not trying to put anybody down i think there's more value that if you were just to do a podcast about the development of your game, then watching you play another game or watch you play your own games, right? Mm-hmm. I understand, like, developers, especially when you're a uh, first party for PlayStation, right? It's hard, I'm sure, to be like, all right, cool, what can we say, what can't we say, what do we do, well, how can't we do? Yeah. But in this era of transparency and stuff, I think that I'd much rather see once Naughty Dog launches uh, Last of Us Part 2, right? They immediately announce, cool, now we're starting the Last of Us 2 Part, or Last of Us Part 2 <laughs> podcast. Yeah. And even if it's just for a month, we're going to sit around the table and talk it through every yeah. step of the way of what happened, where it went wrong, what happened, changes, this thing. There's a God of War podcast right now, right? Is there? With Corey? I'm, I don't know if it's with Corey. Okay. But I'm pretty sure I saw, correct me if I'm wrong, there's like some sort of, I'm going to look it up. I'm you pretty Google sure there's around. some sort of God of War podcast that I've seen floating around. I think they're on like episode three or four or something. While you look around for that, I'm going to introduce you to PSN Profile of the Week. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you go to patreon.com slash games. Give us your questions, your comments to get the show ad free, all that jazz. But more importantly for this segment, give us your PSN profile to look into. Ryan has submitted his. Ryan says, hey guys, I wanted to submit my PSN profile for this week, but with a caveat. After doing my PlayStation Year in Review, I was ashamed. 2019 was the year I got the fewest platinum trophies since I started. Only seven platinums! Granted, I was sucked into Apex and Dota 2 for a lot of that, but no excuses in 2020. So here's what you might say. Seven platinums. All right, Ryan. What are you, who are you fucking? What are you even talking about, kid? Then Ryan says this. I started the year with 182 platinums, and I've set the goal of reaching 200 by the end of the year. I'm hoping that reading my profile on the show will keep me honest and will result in some best friends calling me out on my progress. To add to the challenge, these won't all be cheap and easy Rattalika Platinums, although I did grab Energy Cycle for $1.50 already. Great pickup. I'm going to Platinum, Jedi Fallen Order, Days Gone, The Batman Return to Arkham Collection, Borderlands 3, Anthem, and Pat Upon this year, along with many others. So if you want to follow along at home, Ryan's PSN is Chen... R Dizzle or Chainar Dizzle, C H E N A R D I Z Z L E, uh, on his page right here. Yeah, he's a level 39 in trophies right now. I got the Canada flag there as his uh, PSN profile icon. Uh, has a total of 10,230 trophies according to PSNprofiles.com and 185 platinums at the moment. Hmm. Uh, platinums read like this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. What? What is this? First, I'm not. Energy Cycle and Goat Simulator. All right. Then. Ghostbusters the video game oh, remastered. Oh, Dude, wow. Ghostbusters the video game remastered on hard is no fucking joke. All right? Are you right, Bless? I might have to hit him up you're and ask him right. for some tips there. I mean, I don't the, know, but I'm assuming you're right. Am I ever wrong? No. Uh, then we go to the Outer Worlds, Control, Borderlands 2, The Division 2, Conan Exiles. Great. Hey. That's a cheap-ass easy platinum. Is it really? Yeah. Well, that was the one where you, you, you could do a... It was PSN pl- PS Plus, and yeah, it's PS like 45 Plus, yeah. minutes. Because you can still get into like dev mode or some shit like Wait, that. Wait, really? Or in the creation mode? Yeah. Oh, man. I might Platinum Conan Exiles. You you fan of that one? I have a friend that's a fan of that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Pixel Junk Monsters 2. Nice. Battlefield 1. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Fallout Shelter. Spider-Man. I don't see the Shelter one often. Uh, Stardew Valley. Donut County. Rocket League. Uh, Little Adventure on the Prairie. So he's got the cheap ones in here. Super Destroy or Not DXNA. Super Destroy or Not uh, <laughs> DX on uh, Vita. My kind of man over here. Battle Battlefront 2. South Park Stick of Truth. Batman the Enemy Within. God of War. Far Cry 5. Wow. Origins uh, for Assassin's Creed. Met- Shadow of War. Destiny 2. South Park Fractured But Whole. City Skylines. Interesting. Uh, more t- telltale stuff. Let's go down here. For- what do you got down here for your first one? Good luck for the Batman ones. Holy fucking shit am I jealous of him. What? He also has Ghostbusters the video game. Whoa, he's got with both. With those shitty-ass multiplayer trophies. Whoa. Fuck, Ryan. He's so much better than you. He is way better than me. 
way better than me. I'm a higher total level, and that's all that really counts, but he's way better than <laughs> me. Just letting you know. Fuck, dude. And the obsession started with Assassin's Creed 2. Another wow. good platinum. Wow. wow. Both Ghostbusters. Good stuff. Taking me out of my own show, bless, you know? Have well, him come here and host. Nope, nope, no, we'll we're not going to do that. Me and, no, and, me and you, Ryan. <laughs> we can get rid of Greg Miller. We what did you find out about uh, what you were looking up? Uh, the podcast is called World, God of War Worlds Collide. Okay. It seems like, let's see, they have different people who are on, like in the development pro- process on. And so like this first episode is fitting a side quest in anywhere. And then like episode two is the no cut camera. Episode three is ra- raising Atreus for battle. So like, I guess each episode is them like talking about a different development thing. But it's with the developers. Over. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's on the PlayStation channel on YouTube. Oh, damn. I gotta look into this thing. Yeah. I didn't know. Good get. Good there get. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been PSI Love You XOXO episode six. Remember, you need to be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, where you can go right now and get the post show we're going to be doing for this one. Uh, before we go, Ignacio Rojas wrote into You're Wrong to say, uh, both uh, you, Barrett, and Blessing were wrong about this Assassin's Creed business. You can play every Assassin's Creed game on Xbox One as the console is backwards compatible. There's really no reason uh, to ever play a game on have PC. An Xbox One? But here's the thing: I don't have an Xbox yeah, One. Yeah, that's what really, like, Who has an Xbox One? I mean, I you have know? one, but no, you're on a PlayStation you know? show. Just yeah, you're on a yeah, PlayStation yeah, show. But, like, I play Burnout Revenge. Lean sometimes. into the fucking <laughs> bit. Okay? Burnout God, Revenge is a great game. God. They should make a new Burnout for PlayStation. Yeah, I, I, so I, I, I would rather play. Yeah, I'd rather play it on. You know, I'll play games on the original Xbox rather than PC. I mean, here's better green than Dead Eye. Here's the whole thing: it was just convenient for me to download it on my work computer here. Just plug in a controller, boom, good to go. Are you playing on Stadia? No. No. Steam. But you just plug the controller in. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your show. We love you. Patreon, write in, do that stuff. Give me your dreams. Have some fun in your dreams. Go to sleep tonight. Have good dreams. You know how it is. <laughs> I'm hosting the Dice Awards. We're doing a bunch of other stuff. You know all the, the things. You've been here for two and a half hours. Don't worry about it, right, Bless? Right. All right. Until it's next been a time. a long episode. <laughs> yeah, they're always long. Until next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>